Hello, you're listening to Reviewing History, your comedy history podcast. I'm filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert, joined here by, as always, Stephen Dagliaka and Galati. They're also and, watching it. Yep, they, were, they could be watching it. That's true. I got to get used to that. Got to get used to it. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge for us. Big. And <laughs> we have a guest today from TSD Town. Uh, now, because you guys, they were making fun of how I talk, and now yeah. I'm questioning Please. everything I'm saying. Please. I'm like, TSD, did I say that right? Uh, from <laughs> D-E-S-D. Yeah. D-E-S-D. D-E-S-D. <laughs> from T-E-S-D town, Chris Ladondo. Hey. What's up, guys? Hey. Hello, hello. Hello. Thank Welcome you very much. In. A fellow Staten Islander. We got uh, four Staten Islanders at the table. Yes. Great day for America. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> I know you don't like to claim Staten Island. I don't like to claim Staten Island. I'm from Brooklyn originally, but grew up on Staten Island. <laughs> Everyone from Brooklyn who lives on Staten Island... Says the same thing? Says the exact same line yeah. you just said. Everyone. But I regretfully say that I was born in Brooklyn. Yeah? Yeah, it's a shameful part of my past. Mm-hmm. I don't like to really? talk about it. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm, I love Staten Island. Okay. It's the greatest place in the world. Well, I agree. <laughs> today we talk about a famous Staten Island. We do. Yes. We do. Yeah. Uh, we're doing the movie Glory. Glory. Yes. 1990... Oh, 89. 89. 89. 89. 89. 89. But close. This movie is uh, you're eight, you're an eighty nine baby, right? I am, yes. Oh my god, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, <laughs> eighty eight. I'm eighty seven, so I'm seventy seven. Wow, the oldest guy here, yeah. Sick, yeah, yeah, bro. Blackout. Let's that talk year. about yeah. our age. <laughs> Son of Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie, I've been waiting to do it a long time because when we first started the show. Chris messaged me and he was talking about the show. We're talking about historical movies and he mentioned how much he loves glory. And I was like, I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. And Mm -hmm. when the time is appropriate, which is now February, it's black history month. I figured that it's a great time to do glory. Yeah. It's a good move. It's a good move. The 54th. 54th. Uh, Have you guys seen the movie before? Everyone? Many times. Many times. So only saw half of it when I was younger. Did not finish it. This is like, I consider this my first watch. Okay. okay. Yeah. How old were you with the first time? I, I had to be like 13, maybe 12, if that. Okay. Like your brain. I have seen this movie at least twice before. That's it? Yeah, it's not one I go to a lot. There's but one I was on TV it. a lot. Like on the History Channel and shit. And Discover. No, why not Discover? You didn't play movies there. TBS? <laughs> yeah, like this t- feels like, this a, was like TBS. a TBS movie. TBS film, yeah. yeah. It's on HBO too sometimes, yeah. right? Showtime. Oh, yeah. It, it runs on all the movie channels. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as kids, <laughs> didn't have that luxury. <laughs> I think I've only watched it not on like a TV broadcast with commercials, maybe once or twice. Like popping in a DVD? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you see it. I saw it in pieces so many times. But I, I like, I know the movie like the back of my hand. You know, it's funny. I only saw the movie once years ago, and I felt like I knew every single beat of the movie. Because I feel like it's very simple. It's a very simple movie. Mm -hmm. Like... Like it has like all this praise and stuff, and, it, and it's such such a good movie, but it's very simple. It won three Academy Awards. Denzel, yeah. cinematography. Yep, and uh, and uh, sound, sound design. Yeah, sound design. Okay, it was nominated for two more too. Uh, it was art direction, and I think something. else. I think director. Right? And direct, yeah, I think and direct. Yeah, I think so. Zwick, Edward Zwick, Zwick was nominated yeah. for Best Director. Who we have featured before. Yes, he did Last Samurai. He also did There's one couple of, of similarities. Here, the be, one of my favorite uh, David Lynch film, The Elephant Man. He did that. Too. The oh. cinematographer, yes. Yeah. Zwick is the director. Yeah. Freddie Francis. Freddie Francis, excuse me. Freddie Francis, yeah. yes. Uh-huh. Uh, the director of Glory. A film we have featured in the past on yeah. this Yes. Yeah. So we got some returning players. Yeah. yeah. I have a hot take. Oh, boy. So this movie has all the praise in the world. Everybody loves it. Yeah. I love this movie. I think it's great. Yeah. On this last watch, I felt it kind of drags a little bit. Really? Really? When they're in the training, the training goes on forever. Yeah. It's the whole movie. It's the whole movie. (laughs) There's one other film that does that classic. Let's hear it. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. You and I think it was the first but everybody film to loves do that. The train. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the only. Not to, to to talk about that one, but that seemed like that was the first film to do. Am I correct saying that the first film really? of the Vietnam hmm. War era films to like kind of focus more on, on the camp. training than the actual mission, the war yeah. itself? I'm going through my film roll I think, index. I think so. Dirty right? Dozen. Do they train in that? But yeah. that's not no, a real. Yeah, that's that's a not real. I know. I know it's a World yeah. War II movie, but I'm just thinking of like. But like three fourths of. 
Full Metal is training. Yeah. Well, look, in reality, <laughs> when people talk about Full Metal Jacket, nobody cares about anything after Arlie Ermey's dead and they're yeah. out of boot camp. Yeah. Like, the movie may as well end. <laughs> I think there's plenty of great stuff in the, the latter half of it. But, yeah, you're right. That's the famous part. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, I'll, we got, we got a, uh, a bride <laughs> dad story coming up. Oh, boy. Oh, so, no. no. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw Full Metal Jacket, I was being threatened that I was going to be sent to military school. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my 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 father was all about trying to show me lessons. How old are you? Like he like the movie Sleepers. He, he showed me Sleepers as a lesson. Like I have to think about what I'm going to do or I'm going to end up like getting raped in prison. So he, he used horrible movies as a cautionary tale. And I'm not going to lie. It's effective device. because to this day, I have like a deathly fear of like oh, yeah. being arrested and going to jail. I'm <laughs> terrified of the ocean ever after since seeing Jaws. I do not go in the morning. You and Millie Millions of others. Yeah, but what, I do not fucking go. Was here. it shown to you as a punishment? Like not as a punishment. Like, if you come into the ocean, a shark's gonna get you. <laughs> Watch the shark. Watch the shark. How what old, old, do you old do? You say things like, "You see that, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be you." How old yeah. were you watching Full Metal Jacket? Do you remember? So, I'm between thirteen <laughs> and fifteen, and he's saying that this is what <laughs> it's going to be like for me. When I go to military school, and they had brochures from military schools. I don't know how serious they were if they were bluffing, but I'm being told this. I'm believing my parents. You are in a world of <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. And, and you private. were basically private pile. I was, I was going to be private pile. I was going to be soaped and like all this horrible shit. So and he was showing this to me as this was going to be my existence. And then we get to like after the training stuff, mm -hmm. and he's like, Okay, you can go like about your day now. And like they turned it off. <laughs> Even him. Even yeah, him was like no enough. <laughs> nobody cares after that. So I didn't I had I I've seen that you know, scene, you know what, the, like that segment the first a times. moment. I don't know why we're going so deep into full metal jacket, but the yeah. first moment in that movie after the training scene is my favorite moment in the whole movie. When the Vietnamese prostitute walks over to Joker and goes, Hey, baby, you got girlfriend Vietnam? <laughs> <laughs> me so horny. Yeah. Me love you long Ten time. Ten dollars all my mom so lets me to spend. It's his camera <laughs> That was used as a sample for uh, a lot of rap stuff, right? Oh, like yeah. Oh, yeah. Two live crew. Me love you crew. long time. Me <laughs> love you long yeah. time. Cartman. <laughs> me so <Yeah>. horny. <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> We're talking about war movies. Anyway, glory. Yeah, glory. Anyway, glory. <laughs> We're talking about training well, tra sequences. So I felt like I don't think it dragged. Because you never saw it before. So I didn't you were see still it. like, yeah, I was I, excited. I'm sitting here like, is this over yet? I know where this goes. Yeah, you were just jaded. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. No, I think, I think I was just like. <laughs> bored that day? Yeah. Like I just wasn't I didn't want to watch it. movies. You weren't in the mood. I wasn't in the mood. Yeah. Well, the thing about, <laughs> about the, the training and this, it was like talked about amongst the men and I guess outside of the battalion, why are we even training them? We're not going to have these soldiers actually yes. fight mm -hmm. because it was, it was, I guess, kind of known that they were going to use the black soldiers for like manual labor and things well, like a, that and not the actual face. The, it's the also South. even the most white progressive northerner at the time yeah. is going to be scared of giving guns to black. There people. is yes. a prevailing fear at the time mm -hmm. that the black soldiers would either a become cowards and run away. Yep. They'd be useless or they would become barbarians and start just murdering people. Yeah. Now this is. You know, this is 1863 fucking thinking. thinking it's exactly. insane, but in hindsight, obviously. But at the time, there there were real people that really thought this, and yeah, it's fucked up. You know, I, th <laughs> I think it, so. The boss. So this is the 54th Regiment out of Boston, Massachusetts. Now, I, I assume some of you guys have been to Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. 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 Isn't it something? I mean. For such a like a supposedly like liberal town, like you know, you throw a rock, you hit a fucking college, uh, <laughs> you know, isn't it very segregated city? That's what they say. I'm gonna it, I'm gonna be it, honest. I've been to Boston a handful of times. It's mm -hmm. not like a go to city for me. Um, I've been to the North End, which I know that's, yeah, the, Italian, that's the Italians. Right? Um, I think the Irish of the, the South. Yep. Yeah, and I've mainly been in like um, where the sports stadiums mm -hmm. are and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I haven't seen many black people like right. just on the streets of Boston. Right. From what I've seen, it's a very white city. Right, exactly. So, yeah. like, it's interesting that we're going, this is like 1862, 63, and not much has 
changed maybe from the mind. I mean, I shouldn't say not much I has mean. changed. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, when you think about Boston, like back then and now Boston today, mm, like they're not putting their money where their mouth is as far as like diversity is. With, with new England has always it's been seen weird. as like the brain of the United States. And it's like the new ideas always come out of there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're right. I think there's a certain level of hypocrisy, yeah. too. Um, I don't know enough about the inner workings of the city of Boston to truly comment on that. Somewhat. Right. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy the Hair Guy's listening Jimmy right now. Like, these fucking these, guys are talking about my city. These fucking guys are fucking wicked retarded. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dorchester, rise Dorchester. up. <laughs> rise up. <laughs> uh, but I guess we should start the movie, let's, right? Let's start yeah. the movie. All right. Yeah. Antietam. 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 All right. Yeah. What do you want to talk about Antietam? Antietam? I, yeah. It's uh, the bloodiest day in American history. To mm -hmm. this day. It's never been topped. Well, I guess because mm -hmm. Gettysburg is, is a series of... Gettysburg is three days. Day, three days. More, more casualties than any other day in U.S. history. That includes the Battle of the Bulls. includes 9-11? 22,000. Yeah. One day. Yeah, 22,000. Okay. Wow. 9-11 is yeah. what? Three? 3,000? <laughs> yeah. 3, yeah. Um, it was yeah. uh, 12,000 for the Union, 10,000 for the Confederates, so it was very close. Yeah, Antietam uh, Creek, yeah. Maryland. Lee's army has decided to bring the fight to the north. One of two battles in the entire war fought on northern soil, the other being Gettysburg. The Confederates were dug in, in good defensive positions behind like a post and across a creek, and the Union assaulted the hill like 10 times in one day. But it is considered a turning point and a victory for the north. So because they held because they no because they took the hill eventually and forced Lee back into the south. OK, um, Lincoln will use this because he had it planned already to bring about the Emancipation Proclamation, which is obviously one of the most important pieces of legislation. The time is now. Yeah. Well, that was <laughs> that was the amendment that came later. Um, this only frees. Uh, Slaves in the South, in the I should say, in the states rebelling. The purpose of this being that like, there are <laughs> that'll really piss them <laughs> off. <laughs> well, there are states that are still in the Union with slavery. Place they called them the border states, like Tennessee, Kentucky, the, I believe. Right? Kentucky is is in rebellion. Oh, Tennessee is in rebellion. I think I think you're right. Kentucky is not. I think maybe Kansas, Maryland, Kansas is in the Union. Well, wasn't um, West Virginia established because yes. Virginia? West, wanted slavery. West Virginia seceded from Virginia. There's yeah. a lot that there's a lot of uh, cultural stuff that mm -hmm. goes into that. Mm -hmm. Like um, West Virginia was mostly that's where the hillbilly culture comes. Yeah, from. yeah. Uh, it's like poor Irish mm -hmm. that when they immigrated to the New World way back when, you had uh, all these Protestant these, these Southern plantation owners would would get indentured servants in lieu of African slaves. They'd get Irish slaves. And keep them on the on their property for a set amount of time to pay off their debt. Like they'd pay for their passage to the new world, and then these people they'd work. work. They'd work on the plantation to pay off their debt. Oh, the you had a nice meal. Them. We're going to add that to your right. bill. You know, yeah. once they pay off that debt, they're now free to leave, and the only land left in the state of Virginia is in the mountainous, you know, shitty country where you can't grow anything, and that ended up becoming where West Virginia's found <laughs> foundational stock came from. <laughs> So if you're in West sorry, Virginia, sorry for West Virginians. <laughs> <laughs> well, they went the other direction in the, in the later years. West Virginia, you know, as far as uh, politics are concerned, <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're oh, yeah, no yeah. more union. I mean, they wouldn't consider themselves like a, a blue no, union state. Very much, very like much to themselves. Yeah. yeah, I like yeah. this uh, yeah. this opening though. I love seeing a big encampment, like an encampment, like a of soldiers and tents and all this other stuff. And you, you see them doing like leisure activities and I saw them playing baseball. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah and I was yeah. like, wow. And I, I just like, I'm like, when did baseball actually like right then become a thing about 1839? Right. Yeah. But it yeah. like didn't get rules until a little later yeah. until after the war. Uh, what's his, what's his double name? Double day. day. Abner yeah. double day. His statue was at Gettysburg. He fought in the battle. So, you know, really? Yeah. So He's a vet. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 I was yeah. at Gettysburg. I don't remember seeing that. Hmm. I, yeah, it's That's there. Cool. Can you like go and, like, have a catch next to the statue? I or is that, I like... I don't know who's going to stop you and go for it. <laughs> just <laughs> just, just, out like just a, field. a big field. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was thinking while I was watching this? A bit off topic. Do we have any, like, really great Civil War movies? Like, this is the only one. 
Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Kind of not that great. Well, I only saw it once. Gettysburg is fucking awesome. Is, I got to rewatch. Gods in general sucks. I never made it through it. It's, ha- I got to watch it again. I want to give that a, a good try again. Gettysburg I like. Would you consider The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly a Civil War See, that's movie? That's what I was going to say. Every like Civil War mm. movie seems to be like it's in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's a side. It's a side. Like, well, yeah. yeah. It, it, this is the East and the, all the Westerns were right. happening. Right. <laughs> like, you yeah, know? Tons yeah. of Westerns <laughs> yeah. that have the Civil War in them, but they're not <clears throat> Civil War right. movies. Yeah, that that Can is. You think of any? That's true. I think yeah. what like I like Civil War movies? Am I am I just crazy? Mm. Well, we have we named three, right? What, what do we name? Oh yeah, right. Gettysburg, Gods and Generals, Glory. You, I bet you, there's a ton from That's like the thirties. That's not a lot. Or hostiles. That hostiles was, was kind of. I mean, that was. It was like a Civil War. Vet. Like, yeah. yeah. There's always vets. Yeah, right, dances yeah, with yeah. wolves count. <laughs> No, because so. it's post. it has a scene. It's always it has post, a scene. The yeah. opening scene is the Civil War, but that's the same as yeah. The, it's always in the side. It's a place right. side thing. And yeah. it's, it's so funny because it's like the most dramatic thing in American history. Yeah, why would we not like? It has to be that? remade. We got to do like yeah. a remake. Civil we got to we got to raise money. <laughs> <laughs> we, that's what you should. No, do we got to like make a movie like in between. Yeah. You should do like reenactments with you guys in them, like have the films. Trust and me, I'll, I'll shoot the, one of them with a musket. I, <laughs> it's in the back of my head. <laughs> when I look at that green screen there. So I got confused at uh, the next scene because you see them like marching towards war, and maybe it was like just the lighting on my TV, but the the uniforms look dark. They looked almost mm-hmm. black. Yeah. Did they have black uniforms? They're that, dark. They're, supposed to be blue. It's a darker blue than you think it is in your head. You know? I guess so, yeah. Um, it's almost like a navy blue. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, is this like on purpose? Like, like I don't know. <laughs> it was interesting. Well, and so I want to say this. Um, we get the Matthew Broderick voiceover. Yes. Talking about as, everything. As, the, as Robert Gould Shaw, yeah. our hero for the day. Yeah. Yep. yep. The protagonist. Yes. Did you guys, did you guys like him as a soldier or captain at first? Because I was a little, like, shaky uh, on him. Well, I think, like, when you read about him, the guy, the real guy, and Broderick, Broderick's character, the way how Broderick portrayed it, the real guy seemed like a rebel rouser. Like, he was kind of outspoken. He was, you know, kind of like this rich kid, right. you know, drop out of He Harvard. had no purpose. He had, a, a, he had like an authority problem, like problems with authority, which we do see a couple of times in here. He questions authority a few times, mm-hmm. like with the quartermaster and all that stuff. But Broderick seems like he's playing as like a straight laced, you know, don't want to, you know, step on too many toes, mm-hmm. you know, ty- type of thing. I, I don't know. From what, what from what I've read about him, um, he's he's like a high class, obviously high class yeah. rich guy. Mm-hmm. Spent a lot of his time before the war in Europe, like yeah. being educated, going to different schools. Yeah, um, and then when the war came, joined up uh, and kind of had an unremarkable career until his father, who was a Boston aristocrat, mm-hmm. was rubbing elbows with the governor of Massachusetts, mm-hmm. uh, Andrew Andrew Johnson. Oh, Andrews Andrews. Andrews. Andrews yeah. It's kind of rub rub elbows with him. That the governor's pet project was this black regiment that yep, he wanted yeah. to raise. John Albine Andrew. Andrew, yeah. And his dad and his mother his mother like the from what I understand, his mother was like the political person in the family. She had these progressive politics and kind of forced them on her son <laughs> and husband. And when he was approached to become the lieutenant colonel of the regiment, he actually turned it down. And uh he kind of stewed about it for a couple of days. Yeah, he didn't. He had, to, he had to come to God about it because he knew that it would be like. Well, a, the stigma attached socially. Exactly. The, sto- the social stigma definitely put him down. But he came back. He and, took the job. And he did it. And that's where we're at at the start of this movie. Mm-hmm. And he's in this. Well, before that, he's in this battle. He gets clipped at Antietam in the neck. And yep. he lays dead. He lays down. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And you see everyone like running around him and stuff. It's almost like cowardice. That's what I was wondering. Is he supposed to be portrayed as a coward here? I don't I think so. I think subtly no, he I is. I don't think so. I don't think so. I he kinda, was like knocked out. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if if I consider it knocked out, but I would say he was part of a charge that failed. And when everyone fell, he was just like, well, I'm either going to die here or this is going to end. I think you there's a, a little bit of like a fake it till you make it aspect to his character throughout the movie. Like he's Maybe. he feels like he's not up to the task. That's what I doing. think. He's like yeah. kind of ashamed here. Right. That's why he gets up and like that guy's looking at him. Right. 
and he's got we know he's got a little bit of PTSD because in the the scene at the house mm -hmm. oh, somebody I love that. crashes something. Like, yeah. Something. How yeah. great is it when the fucking head blows up in that opening yeah. war scene? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that opening <laughs> scene that that is so good. Uh, All yeah. the battle scenes in this are so good. It's so brutal. It just oh makes me God. realize that I'm I'm so lucky to have never <laughs> served in the <laughs> the the second scene of the movie is in the medical tent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's getting sewn up on his Please neck. Please don't cut anymore. No, no, no. Yeah. And uh, the doctor, uh, the, sur uh, the surgeon working on him. Is Neelix. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> it's fucking Neelix from Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was listening to it and I was like, is that, that fucking voice. Ethan Phillips? <laughs> <laughs> you nerds. <laughs> Did you know, Steve? No, I don't watch Star Trek Voyager. And he tells him about the Emancipation Proclamation. Mm -hmm. Like that. Oh, now there is a line which we skipped over, but I did find it is interesting in his voiceover, which they say some of these things happened from letters that Shaw wrote yeah. home. Yeah, he, he says many of his regiment never saw a Negro or a yeah. black person. They say so, that is That's that so is that believable? We just Absolutely. said about Boston. One hundred percent believable. Yeah. There yeah. are. I actually looked up the numbers <laughs> yeah. on this. So okay. there are four and a half Drive million four hours north Africans <laughs> in the United States. How yeah. many? Four and a half million. Okay. Which is not a lot. No. 500,000 of them live in the north. The okay. rest of them are all in the south. So there's completely a, not. 3.5 million are slaves. Yes. Okay. That's why when they raise this regiment. Oh, I should say this. The movie is completely wrong in the makeup of the of the guys. Yes, I, I was going to bring that up too. The, the 54th governor, were mostly freed men. Overwhelmingly born free. Yes. None of these guys ever saw a plantation. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like one or two because mm -hmm. the governor when he was recruiting these guys was like they need to be perfect we need he felt that uh s former slaves may be intimidated by the confederates like going back to people that they used to call master it mm. would fuck with them mentally right and he wanted like or emotion he, he emotion wanted, could take over too he wanted right. educated yeah. guys who could come and show off and the movie it does it differently, and I I like what they do with the movie because it works. Yeah, it but works it's, narratively. It's just, it's just you know in an accuracy that we got to talk yeah. about. There's mm -hmm. there's also two we we had talked about it before we were recording. There there are two um, in real life. Frederick uh, Frederick Douglass's mm -hmm. sons yep. were in the 54th mm -hmm. Regiment, and I think their characters are kind of between, I guess we had said Morgan Freeman's character, and I believe the corporal, his friend Thomas, who's like yeah. the educated guy from Harvard. Yeah. Uh, um, He's I, like a stand-in for Yeah, him. so I think... And that, the only that, reason I said Morgan Freeman is because he becomes the sergeant, and Frederick Douglass', Frederick Douglass his son, is the guy who becomes the sergeant. And you see him a few times in this, Frederick Douglass. Oh yeah, he's in, he's in, he's in that he's party. In the house. He's in the party, yeah. he's uh, staring down at the parade, <laughs> and you kind of like... I think it's a nod to that. Like, they don't want to say it, but well, it's he, a nod. He had, it was a huge part of putting this together. Yeah. Um, Frederick Douglass was an escape slave who made his way north as a teenager mm. and then spent the entire, like, rest of his life lobbying for, for abolition. abolition. Mm -hmm. He became buddies with Lincoln. You know, this is a... He's an influential dude. Important guy. Went all over the world. Went to Europe and stuff, talking mm -hmm. to kings and queens, and he's all over the place. He's one of those guys that you learn about in high school history yep. class, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And rightfully so. And Craziest the hairdo there ever was. <laughs> Jimmy McMillan got to be a big fan. <laughs> He's like... Uh, he, the rent is too <laughs> damn high. <laughs> he also reminds me of that Princeton professor uh, from today. What's his name? <laughs> Uh, he's on like Bill Maher all the time. <laughs> Forgot his name. He's got a, a crazy hairdo too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, he kind of dresses like him too, <laughs> like from the 1800s. This guy. Oh, I think I know the guy yeah. you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I forgot his name. I should know. Uh, but yeah, they have this party at at his parents' house. Yeah, and he's he's told that he's going to lead the, this group. Well, he's been selected you know? essentially. Yeah. Mm. Now, like I said, in real life, he took a few... Oh, I forgot to say this before. What I, what I was getting at before with the population of uh, African-Americans, the um, the 54th could not be raised completely on Massachusetts men, which is normally what all of these regiments were doing. You know, you got the 54th Massachusetts, mm -hmm. you know, the 10th New York, whatever, they're all New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah. Um, they had to go all over to different states and be like, where are black soldiers and they had to <laughs> volunteer and come to Massachusetts for this like they're from all over the place they're Which probably uh, from uh, if you recall on Staten Island the Sandy Ground 
Uh, that's where I live. Uh -huh. That's that's probably where <laughs> they they were from too. Uh, I'm sure. I wouldn't 100%. Be in fact, uh, funny you mentioned that. Uh, there was one day Brian and I were <laughs> young <laughs> lads, young lads, I running through there, 12, 13 years old maybe, and uh, running through like we're on riding our, our bikes, riding our bikes, and we saw like this little house with like this design in the front, and we didn't know what it was. Right. So we just kind of walk up to it, and like, hey, we're well, like, hi, and this lady comes out, and it's like, hi, boys, uh, what can I do for you? And we're like, we're just wondering what you are. And we're like, we're the so same. Like, I'm a black person. <laughs> <laughs> I've never so seen one. <laughs> <laughs> Our other friend standing behind us, scared, doesn't know what he's looking at. <laughs> what is Sandy Ground, guys? Well, that's what we yeah. found out. Sandy Ground's museum was like three houses down from us. So mm -hmm. we walked in and we find out that our location on Staten Island was an oyster colony. It was a yeah. a uh, neighborhood essentially of freed slaves, guys, who, slaves, yep. guys yep. who had escaped and come north, yep. yeah. and they set up a nice uh, community for themselves. And yeah, they were oyster fishermen, oyster. They were and they call it sandy town. grounds because all the sand would come up from the beach after they're doing that and get all into the the roads. Mm -hmm. And if you walked around this time when you keep walking, you'll still see like remnants of that. You'll see like sandy parts of the road where it just like is well. This random. is this is an aside. And you don't know why. But the sand on Staten Island can also only be found in Africa. Yes, like yeah, the, it's, it's a unique. Yep. I didn't clay. know that. It's yeah. a unique clay. I know it's. Cl I know yep. it's clay, you heard clay but I did not ponds. know that. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they used to make bricks. Right. It's apparently it's perfect for making great bricks. Mm -hmm. Wow. And yeah, the the ground is unique. Kreischer. Kreischer made the Kreischer. Right. 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 Kreischer Mansion. Kreischer Mansion. Which I used to call bricks. Dracula's cat <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid. You if you're from Staten Island, you're fucking. Yeah, you're loving all this. Oh yeah. You could do a whole show on Chrysler Mansion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, an another fun fact about Staten Island, uh, the, the largest Liberian population outside of Liberia is on Staten Island. It's I had no that. idea. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, isn't Liberia tied to the Civil War? I, the Revolution. Yeah, the, the Revolution. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that was where they were sending them in the Back to Africa movement after the Civil War. Uh, like, that I may have been part of it mm -hmm. as far as, like, Marcus Garvey later on. Yeah. But... Liberia was um, uh, Monroe, President Monroe. Mm -hmm. He set up this whole thing where they were going to colonize Liberia with freed slaves. Okay. So this was in like the 1810s. Um, yeah, yeah. The capital of Liberia is Monrovia. It's named after him. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. So I can't find it right now. And it's pissing me off. Mm -hmm. But when I was doing my research for this, I discovered that the 54th was not the first all-black regiment. It was just the most publicized. Um, there was the North Carolina second, I believe. Well, they're in the movie. They're in the movie. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll talk about them. Okay. Yeah, I think you see them. Uh, <laughs> but there were a couple before them. They were actually like Not before. The but they, but there's yeah, like, but they it's didn't, very loose. Like, but, but they didn't fight. They they right. did what we saw in the film mm -hmm. as, you know, ransack. They you know, burned a town. Burned town. It's called Darien, like Georgia. We'll get there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're at the dinner party, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. <clears throat> and... Frederick Douglass is there. They're talking about the 54th. Mm -hmm. um, a Robin Hood who can speak with a British accent. Right. There's, a, yeah. there's a man in tights. He's there. <laughs> so what Carrie, do you think? How do you pronounce the last name? Carrie Ewells? Ewells? Ells? E-L-W-E-S. -E Carrie Ellis, I always thought he was. Ellis? Ellis. 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 Okay. Ellis. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll call him Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> he knew what was up What exactly. do you think of his American accent? Terrible. It's as bad as Costner's, like... Costner had the sense not to do a British accent. <laughs> Carrie Olds was like, I'm going to just butcher the American accent. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Cabot. You, you know what? I, him and that guy from um, uh, Sons of Anarchy, that actor. Theo Rossi? No, the, the other British guy, the main guy. It's a blonde guy. Oh, uh, I thought you were talking about oh, um, the, the main Hellboy. Guy. What's his name? No, Ron no, no. Perlman. Ron Perlman. No, no. Ron Perlman's from the Bronx. <laughs> Jamie, yeah. Hun Jamie Hunman? Is I think so. I think it's the blonde guy, handsome dude. Okay, yeah, that's him. Horrible American. Especially, it gets worse when these guys yell. <laughs> they can't in hide English, it. they can't hide it. It just comes <laughs> out. It's like, you know, like when a British, like the Beatles, when they sing, they lose the accent. Sure. It's like when like they, it's, it's, it's mm. the opposite when British people like yell, it's the, their American <laughs> accent cracks like fucking. That's why you got to respect the guys like Pierce Brosnan and Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson's been playing like the same guy, uh, like an American <laughs> for like 30 American. years. And he just sounds like Liam Neeson. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Brian Mills. <laughs> I want to work on some improvisational. You comedy. know who does an incredible American accent that you would never even know he's British is um, 
Well, Hugh Laurie from House. Oh, right. right. Yes. Yeah. He's and a good one. Uh, Captain Winners from Band of Brothers. I forget his name. Um, I, I noticed that the, the, the best <laughs> like the best actors that, that are not from the United States that do the, the best American accent, they're from Australia. Oh, yeah. Like Australians do the best. Mel. Amer- Hugh Jackman. Which is crazy. <laughs> Damien exactly. Lewis. Damien Lewis. Which is insane. Lewis. Their accents are like so heavy. It's, I, like, I mean, how? You ever see that show True Blood? That, that yeah. guy, Jason Stackhouse? That guy's yeah. from Australia. Like, he does like, he said he was doing like an impression of George Bush, like, the whole, the whole time. <laughs> I I gotta, now I want to kind of go back and watch scenes just to be like, it's great. Oh, yeah, man, all, Australia, really? all the Australian. That actors. is Bush. <laughs> <laughs> we also yeah. get a. Uh, well, in this scene, I yeah. love when uh, Matthew Broderick is trying to convince his friend to do something. He's like, just leave the house. It's okay. You don't have to be sick. Come over. And then Oh, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Well, I'm saying, like, I think he's got the wrong movie. Damn it. <laughs> and it took us all hey, a second. It took us hey, all listen, a little bit Hey, listen, like, <laughs> Life moves fast. If you don't look around, you might miss it. <laughs> <laughs> when Jefferson Davis was in Egypt, lad. <laughs> Would you say, like, if you recall, because I'm a little older than you guys, that this film was the film where Matthew Broderick became an actor? Became a ser- Well, I think he tried. Uh, in film, because he was always a theater guy. Mm-hmm. He was always a theater yeah. actor for like, he's like an Al Pacino. Al Pacino will like, you don't see him in movies, he's doing Broadway, like when you're thinking about it. He's, he's like on stage right play. now, yeah. right? But like, I think this was the film uh, uh, that made him like a mainstream film drama actor. It could be wrong, but that's the one that I recall. I'll uh, say this, in my world, <laughs> he has three movies and three movies only. Ferris, Ferris Bueller, Bueller Glory, and Cable Guy. Oh, not Godzilla? No, oh, Godzilla, motherfucker. Godzilla. God Godzilla. Inspector Gadget? <laughs> Broderick rules. <laughs> so He's the worm guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking of, like, Broderick's career as I was watching this. Mm-hmm. And this is, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I think it's one of the only times I've seen him do, like, an attempt serious, at serious drama. Yeah. And I don't know if it takes fully. <laughs> here's, here's what I'll say about that. I, I kind of agree with you. But only because his surrounding actors are utterly fantastic. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's up got against, Denzel. He's got Morgan Freeman. He's got the be- Andre Brower. Who's that? Thomas. Thomas. Oh, yeah. He's, oh. Yeah, that guy's yeah. good. Oh, he's the best in the movie. He is the movie in my eyes. I mean, Denzel won an Oscar. Denzel yeah, is, this is one, yeah. utterly insane, too. Um, it's Captain Ray Holt from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And it, it's, you know, what's interesting <laughs> is Roderick, is, he's in comedies, but he's not funny at all. He's always the straight man. Oh, except for Ferris Bueller, but he's not funny in that. He was good in The Producer. You're an asshole. I also saw yeah, him Cameron, live yeah, in the movie. Know. I saw him live in uh, This Is A Play, or This Is Only A Play. Well, he he kind of like, it was a play about making a play. It wasn't even a musical. He was really good in it. He was in The Producers with Nathan Lane, the right. remake. Nathan Lane is in that play, too. I can't get enough uh, Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane, probably my I favorite gay guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? I would have thought you would have said Steve. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking rude. <laughs> I think there's when you the, what you said about the supporting cast. I think mm-hmm. there was a there might have been a choice on how he played this role because I was telling Brian in early conversations about uh, this film. Um, if you notice him in the film, he's he's like very slow delivery, and he he almost knows what the fate's going to be. Like he's like going, it's like a, it's like a slow death. Like he knows what's, how it's good. The outcome's going to be. He looks everyone directly in the eye, Mm. like all the time, each one of them. I I mean, not to fast forward, but when we get to the last, like towards the last scene, when, when they're about to storm Fort Wagner and he does, he, like he walks through the the men, like, and they're all like cheering him on. He looks, look at him. He looks at every single one of them Mm. in the eye because he knows it's probably the last time he's going to see them. Right. Mm. Yo, he knows it's a death. It's it's, a a death march. Like it. So I think that's how he played it. Maybe. I I don't don't know. And here's what I'll say. The real guy is 23. And I do like that Broderick looks like a young, He's a young man. A young yeah. man, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm glad they didn't get like this is '89. I don't know, like fucking James Brolin or something, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, he he plays it brilliantly because at first you're kind of almost against him as well. Because it's like he's young, he seems inexperienced, he seems soft spoken for a captain. Th- th- he's rich. It's like this seems weird. By the end of the movie, it's like I love you. 
Well, mm-hmm. like you're the best. At the point we <laughs> we're at where we're talking, the next scene is really the sh- the recruitment. Yep, mm-hmm. and it's by immediately. I think he has a deep understanding of what his job is, mm-hmm. and he shows it immediately by distancing himself from it's to prove his, a his point. Friends, yeah. you know, he's got two friends in the regiment: right. Cabot, who we talked about, Men and Tights Man, and mm-hmm. Thomas, mm-hmm. who Men we should talk about right now, who was also at the party in the previous scene. Mm-hmm. Yes, who is a freed man? He's been freed his whole life. He's a black guy now, um, highly educated. He's a fictional character. Yes. But like you said, I think he's, he probably, he's probably probably a Stanley like Frederick yeah. Douglass's kid. Yeah, he's based probably like on a him. mix between the one and two. Of them. <clears throat> yeah, we're in uh, Reedville, Massachusetts, mm-hmm. and looks they, like a factory town. Yeah, looks yeah. cold, cool. and it should be because it's January. It looks swampy. Yeah, it looks wet. Wet. Yeah, it's yeah. very it wet. I wouldn't say it looks swampy. Uh, Denzel is there. They get an Irish, an angry Irishman. <laughs> 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 Major, Denzel I mean, is Major just Forbes. a dick, like the entire movie. Practically, he, he is a, He's a runaway slave, angry huh? guy. He's an angry runaway mm-hmm. slave. Yes, yeah, he knows what's rightly up for the so. Most part. I mean, he's <laughs> right, got a right, chip yeah. on his shoulder. It's probably a justified chip. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, look at his back when they yeah. show it later. Right. Yeah. You know, I don't think that. Um, yeah, he think he fell. <laughs> he says he escaped when he was 12 so that means he got all of them as a boy that's what I was wondering you know too. I don't know I don't know if those if those scars really line up with <laughs> his character <laughs> well he could have been lying yeah uh, who knows I don't know I ran but for president I, I, I mean while win. we're on the subject I just want to point this out he gets flogged and it's the most famous scene in the whole movie yes. that's the Oscar clip that's right. how Denzel yeah, won his he, Oscar yeah. he tears, yeah. tears up yeah. flogging Banned in 1861 in the U.S. Army. That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So obviously that's a fictional event. But this is what I, we're skipping ahead a little bit. Yeah, but a lot. Yeah, of it. A lot. Know, yeah. Are. While we're while we're talking about the flogging scene. Mm-hmm, sure. So this is what I was wondering. So obviously you just said it's banned in 1861. Yes. But in the movie, right? Yeah. Is there another punishment Matthew Broderick can go with? And he is choosing specifically to whip him? No. There's no, no I don't think so. punishment back then? That had for desertion? So. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is there like a... Like, they would hang you. They would hang you for desertion. So, yeah, it's, like, it's what are the by, options? I don't, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think Matthew Broderick was going for the slave humiliation. I don't think that was his intent. I think... That is what it turns out to be. Yeah, I think he's, but. like, from... Bra- <laughs> for, I understand it from... You understand it from both characters' perspectives. Right. Because Broderick has to punish him. Yes. He would have been hung. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> well, I don't think he would have been hung. It's desertion, yeah. But you can be arrested. There's a yeah. lot of different things. It's a, you, either yeah. way, it's a court. He could have been put in like you know, a like, in like a arrested. box or something. Yeah. You know. But like, I don't put him in put him in in solitary confinement. I I think he's treating him like you would like if if he was in charge of a white platoon and this had happened like a white regiment. Mm-hmm. I think Broderick would do the same thing. Yes. Yeah. In this yeah. situation, right? yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, he is not discriminating. He just you know? he you could tell he feels worse about it because of the situation. Right. It's like this is this was an ex-slave. He's been through this before. I don't want to do this, but I have to do this because if they all see you can just walk away, I'm not going to have an army. His job is to make them prepared for right. battle. Yes. And that he is going to do that by hook or fucking crook. And I, yeah. we're still in the boot camp, right? Yeah, we got to do the whole boot camp. So yeah. There and there's a camp. perfect example of that. They start running, you know, to get ready. Major and, Forbes. And Thomas Thomas is, like, all gassed and shit, and he's talking to uh, Robin Hood. Yeah, Cabot. Mm. Yeah, Cabot. <laughs> he's, and he's like, hey, buddy. And Matthew Broderick calls him over, and he's like, you can't fraternize no with the fraternization. Like, yeah. treat this like fucking serious. This yeah. is real. He's like, it's Thomas. Yeah. He goes like that. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I don't give a shit. Right. Well, I'm sorry, Massa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He goes like that. Yeah. He's skipping yeah. that whole thing. Now, that was a good performance from yeah. uh, Carrie Hill's there. He did that a little too well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry sir. Johnson. I wanted to do that all day. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting there waiting, <laughs> shaking him out. God, I can't wait. <laughs> now we so we the, the drill. So he's trying to show them at a march, mm-hmm. and they don't know the, the Irish right, guy. The Irish guy. <laughs> 
He is a great character, by the yeah, way. He's, uh, he's based on two. Real come people. on, you Hindus! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he, he throws racial slurs around like, like oh right. yeah. <laughs> well, they don't know they're left and right. Yes, yeah. that's what he, he discovers yes. they don't, and then yeah. teaches them. Yes, <laughs> angrily, but he teaches them. <laughs> that's his job. <laughs> <laughs> he works them out. Now you're getting it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, you said he was um, based on two people. Yeah, uh, Major Forbes, the character, is actually. Actually, based on Edward Hollowell That's and the his Irishman? brother Norwood, the Irishman. Mm-hmm. So oh, two yeah. Hollowells. Yeah, so two Hollowells put together make that brutal drill <laughs> sergeant. Okay. <laughs> and they say in the movie, which I do think is interesting, they go. Um, you want to march up and down the square? <laughs> <laughs> but he sa- they say that the Irish hate the blacks. This yeah. is true. And the reason for it, I was thinking about it. I mean, not it. that explicitly. Is these guys says, yeah, they have no love for each other. Well, this is what I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Because in Ireland, they're not coming into contact with many black people. That's not why. It, well, yeah. this is why I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. They, it's because when they get to America, when they immigrate here, they're being forced to fight for them. That's part of it. But that is the case for all of white America. Yeah. Well, I'm um, thinking. <laughs> I think it has to do with jobs, right? Exactly. So mm-hmm. like any immigrant situation in, in, our, in any country, it's when the new immigrant comes in, it's always about a lot of different things. But mostly these people are going to take our jobs. In places like Boston and New York and Philadelphia, these two groups of people are competing for the same jobs. Right. And well, and there used to be factories. like the signs, no blacks, no right. Jews, no, I, no Irish. Irish need not apply. Just yeah. factory jobs. Um, basic this is actually pointed jobs. out really well in Gangs of New York. <laughs> Gangs of New York yeah. is yeah. all about that. Right. Yeah. Which, uh, is that a Civil War movie? Again, it's in the background. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wasn't it earlier? No. No, it's during the Civil War. In uh, fact, in what, fact. You mean chronologically as far as when it takes place? Yeah. Was it earlier than it's the Civil 63. War? It's 63. Well, the end of the movie is 63. Okay. Because like, actually the, the Irish year. people come okay. off yeah. the boat and they're like, sign up here. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Yes. They have the big draft riots. Yeah, yeah, the draft riots in there. Yeah, that's right. The famine was in the 50s. Or the 40s. The 40s. Potato famine? Yeah. Rest in peace. But they just don't stop, those Irish. They keep coming. (laughs) Hey, hey, I'm like 5% Irish. (laughs) So during the drill scene, which I think is... I'm surprised this isn't one of the more famous scenes from the movie. uh, They mark everyone for death, the Confederacy. Yeah. So they they respond to the the proclamation, proclamation, which isn't too far off from the truth. Well, they 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 respond to uh, the... They've heard that there will be black soldiers. Yes. The 54th was being raised. Mm-hmm. And the Confederate response to this is? The Confederate Anyone captured? The, Confeder- the Confederate Congress proclamation. Right. Okay. Any, any, any black soldiers captured will be enslaved. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, any white officers leading black right. soldiers will be killed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's it. The There's movie no takes it a little bit more brutal where it's like, you'll all be killed. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I think they say even the black soldiers will be killed and the... And the In sedition. Right? Where they have the fucking nerve yeah. of scumbags to say that, <laughs> that we were being sedition, seditionists. Sorry. Well, <laughs> from, the from, the no, you no, yeah. from the southern perspective, their biggest right. fear is servile insurrection. They are terrified that what happened in Haiti is going to happen in the south, which is their, their slaves will get Rise their hands up. on some guns mm-hmm. and murder the masters. Yes, as, a, as they should. They say, if you want to leave, you can. And right. Denzel has a great line. You still want that blue, blue suit? suit? Yeah. 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 Because they were, because that there's that one character throughout the, the whole training, they want to get he wanted to get the uniform. They want to be proper. They soldiers. want to proper soldiers because yeah. right now they're training and they're just wearing whatever they have. Some of them don't have shoes or mm-hmm. but proper footing, and they're they're led to believe that they're most likely not going to get standard uniforms. Yep. Yeah, I I couldn't find anything about that. Could you guys? Yes, mm-hmm. slightly. I, I like from everything I watched, it like wasn't even an issue. Everything I looked up. Like, they just got the uniform? Uh, I, th- I thought maybe this was an invention of the movie. So the the three dollars docked from their pay that's true that's that, true. that yeah. yeah but that's and it's real but it's but it's, it's for it's, the uniform allowance well hold on here's the thing matthew broderick the hit shaw is the one who told them not to accept the lesser pay yes, yes. It, it was his idea it was to his make idea. that a protest yeah. yes right. he, and it worked it did work it took a while but it worked and that um, was his idea. It wasn't, you know, a black Denzel's, uh, Denzel uh, yeah, guy, yeah. Let's, you know. Let's clarify it. Okay. So in the movie, there's a scene where it's payday. And they were promised when they signed up for $13 a month, right? 
15, I think. It was 13. 13. 13. 13. Oh, yeah, they yeah. got 10. And they, they got 10. 10. Yeah. They, all of a sudden, it's payday, and they're getting 10 instead of 13 because they're black. Mm-hmm. On top of that, I don't think they say this in the movie, but this is the reality of it. $3 of that $10 was then deducted for uniforms. Yes. And when they heard this, in reality, Robert Gould Shaw was like, well, none of us are going to accept the pay. And this looks horrible if there's regiments of the army who are fighting and dying and not getting paid for it. And everybody knows that they make a big stink about it. Mm-hmm. Go in, in Especially this- if you're using free labor from black people and you're supposed to be the abolitionist Bingo. side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fast forward 18 months, they do fix this and, and make the pay equal. But there will be in the interim new black regiments that get raised after the 54th does what it does. And we'll talk about the legacy of that later. They also would uh, not take their pay. They they it like got kept it snowballing became a and became movement. a bigger and bigger thing, and that's what eventually you know got the government on the right track. And I actually have your uh, inflation prices here, so you can tell what the ten versus thirteen oh. is. Okay. Uh, so ten dollars um, back then was actually about one hundred eighty-two a month. A month. That's they're getting. Uh, thirteen dollars was actually two hundred thirty-seven. Well, keep in, in mind today's, seems- today's money. Keep in mind the cost that seems of living. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. Cost the cost of living, living is yeah. five cents. You get a ton of stuff, you know. But to give you yeah, a, that's, that's a different idea of wrong. what they were getting paid, the average uh, the average person in America at that time, I believe, was getting that about a week. It was about thirteen dollars a week instead of a month. So Why would anyone become a soldier? You get free food. You get sh- and f- yeah. these are people that really, I mean, in the movie especially. A lot of them, you know, they're fighting. They're, they're ex-slaves. No, I'm talking about the whites. Oh, whites? Well, there's a draft too. Mm-hmm. Well, that's late. Would you? Would you have to pay to get out of? There's three hundred dollar men. You're also fighting for a cause. It's a good way to make your way. You know, if we're talking about thirteen dollars a month being, what would you say, two hundred something for uh, a month? You can't live yeah. on that. Well, you're not supposed to. It's two hundred thirty-seven dollars a month. But this is also no one would do that. Imagine if you were getting two hundred dollars a month, because that's what he's saying essentially. Is if you were in the army today and you made two hundred dollars a month, and then they docked you to get the less. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry, that, you got to pay for your own. But boots. that money is going so much further. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Because you have to understand, like that two hundred thirty-seven equivalent is mm-hmm. like, you know, you're buying like a giant thing of seed right. for like a penny. Yeah, you go to right. you, know? right. you go to, you go to right. Costco and you get the. <laughs> right. It's not like the family Most packs are not two hundred dollars. The yeah. economy pack. <laughs> <laughs> your groceries cost you four to three to four dollars. Or you make yeah. you're hunting your own groceries, uh, right? And you're you're buying. Okay, so cattle. so thirteen dollars in eighteen sixty three is three hundred and seven dollars today. There you go. I just looked. I it think up. I did twenty 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 one or twenty twenty two or something. Like that. Uh, yeah, it's right. it, yeah, it's around the same. Whatever. <laughs> all right. It's wild. Anyway, yeah, this is it. So so let's do the musket scene. <laughs> This oh, is yes. cool. Yes. This is this was done again in Last Samurai. Yes, it's the same yes. scene. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So Loved it. the black soldiers finally get muskets and they're all happy. Yes. The Anfield rifle. They're playing. Yeah. Why is it the Enfield? Because that's a British gun. <laughs> the the uh, Americans use Winchester. The Confederates were they were using the Spencer. Uh, the Confederates were using Enfield. I got an educated guess. Okay. Yeah. Those guns were probably made in the South. The ones that the uh, the Winchesters and all that stuff. They were probably made down there. And we didn't have access to. Them. Is that popular? Is that a possibility? Mm. Well, you're saying the like, Enfield is a British gun. The Enfield is a British rifle. Not, not that one. I'm talking about the wind, like those. The, oh, like the, yeah. the American weapons. Well, yeah, they were probably. There made. may be one or two. I'm not sure. Um, but what the about no- the Colts? Was that a, definitely uh, up north? Definitely. Yeah. I'm not. I don't. I wish I knew the locations offhand. That I don't. was yeah. That was a un- that was a but that was a. Union I will say this: the north was incredibly more industrialized than the south. That is true. Um, most of the factories were in the north. Uh, overwhelmingly, most of the railroads were in the north. The southerners were at a huge disadvantage on well, they're economic. R- they're mind. rural. They're rural. Yeah. In fact, I think you can make a case that right from the jump of uh, Europeans coming to the New World, almost two different societies were being built from from the get go, as far as thought process and literal way of life. And that's, you know, I'm going to stand by that 100%. It's not even a thought anymore. This is the truth. (laughs) Fucking... (laughs) Because it leads to to civil war, right? Okay. Because you have this this slave economy 
that the issue itself was there for the Declaration of Independence, right? And they were like, the only thing that united the colonies was the- Hatred of the British. Was hatred of the British. Was like, we want independence. We want to get out of this. Okay. The slavery question would have broke up- well, that's the, the thing. The United States where it's like, in 1776, in if they didn't kick it down, kick the can down the road. Well, that's the yeah. thing where people like they get on the founding fathers about all this shit, and it's like they had a choice at that moment. They could have been 13 colonies coming together as one like to government. fight an empire. To Join fight an empire. That was too liberal of a thought back then to have to have for free a slave. I think they knew slavery is evil, but you know what? This is for our grandchildren to figure out. I mean, exactly. Yeah. They yeah. kicked the can yeah. down they, they, the road. They, 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 we can't. We, we, until they couldn't kick it anymore. Like t- they've all yep. said, like Thomas Jefferson said yeah. it was a moral blight. Washington. Yeah. Like yeah. these guys knew it was fucked yeah. up. Right. But, of course. But, it, but the, the, the issue the, couldn't have been solved then. They, there wouldn't be a country. There wouldn't be a country. Because what would have happened is... Let's say we win the American Revolution and then we we try to end slavery, right? Mm-hmm. They're gonna every the South st- would just be like, well, I'm not gonna be part of this. Every country. state would just go fuck you. They'd go their yeah. own way, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the British would be like, oh, cool, it's 1812, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that, you probably don't get you never would have got the American or, experiment off the ground. You don't get an no, industrial no boom either. It's sadly right. a, a lot of blood to get that. Yeah. Okay. But here's the thing, and well, it took the North conquering the South. That's what it is. It's. It's yeah, it's it, it's sure. eradicating their civilization sure. and replacing it with northern civilization. America, like yeah. you know, and the South, yes. we paid a heavy toll in blood yes. to correct this mistake. You know? Yeah. Like I don't know about the, the rest of the world and the European countries, but from my money, no country pl- paid as bloody a toll as America to eliminate slavery. Um other than African nations, probably. Right? Like yeah. I can't think of, you know, I don't, there was no civil war in England over it. Not over slavery. There were no well, slaves. Well, yeah. few. They got rid of slaves before us. Yes, they did. The French and all yeah, of we, were very we were We were, we were very late to the game on that. <laughs> I wonder if population had a uh, key factor with that, too. Because, like, oh, like, the more populated areas have more workers and have a better economy as opposed oh, yeah. to like the south well, where could it's it, like could a different things. economy too but could it also exactly, be that yeah. it's closer to the vatican you get that god factor comes into play of like in you know, europe the united states in europe very religious yeah not catholic though. not catholic, not catholic <laughs> but still very much in the same vein of you know christianity and you know um i think you had a culture and an economy that's that dependent came up on in it. a specific yeah. way that had been there for two, three hundred years. Yeah. And in the North, they re- that type of economy never took off because you have things like cotton and tobacco and cash crops that require massive plantations that need a lot of manpower. And at the time... The weather suits it growing all right, year. Yeah. Um, at the time, you didn't have people, enough human beings. There weren't enough human beings in the southern colonies to man these plantations so they imported <clears throat> workers. And you know, you could say some areas of the South still never recovered from what happened to their yeah. economy after yeah. the Civil War. Oh, sure. Like yeah. places like Mississippi, Missouri. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that they were like, there's places that were rich and affluent. Also remember, post-war, you had a military occupation. Oh, yeah, Reconstruction. Reconstru- so reconstruction is not Reconstruction. That's a euphemism. It's a military occupation. It is northern soldiers on every corner of New Orleans, you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. And, and then northern businessmen essentially coming in and taking over the entire economy. Yeah. The carpetbaggers and whatnot. Yeah. Fuck them. It, it's it's, <laughs> it is a conquest. I mean, yeah, the north, we beat the south, and then, you know, they came in. Yeah, fuck them. Losing has its consequences. Yeah. All right, so let's the move on. Um, was so good. So the target practice scene, this yeah. is so good, where he's yeah. like... They're playing with the rifles, they're fooling around, and you see one is a crack shot. Mm-hmm. He can't speak very well. I like that guy. Can't read and yeah. write very good well, character. but he's Was a he good ever shot. in anything else? I don't know his name. Yeah, I don't know him either. He's Pull really good. I though. feel like I've Pull seen him right. elsewhere. But Fantastic I, actor. He's good. Yeah. And they're all laughing like, oh, shoot, shoot the can again, shoot the bottle. And, and it's very good. loose, he's and nobody's good. got any discipline. Uh-huh. And and Robin Hood is running this right. with his he's having men. a great time. <laughs> he yeah. loves the guys it. and he wants to be their pal. Yeah. And he can't be their pal if he's going to be their commander. Mm-hmm. And that's what Shaw was trying to get. But across. in the beginning, he's he said it himself. He's not material for that. 
he was the common re. He did not want to have that position, if you mm-hmm. remember. He's like, I'll go with you if you really want, but this is well, they not were friends my before job. the war, yeah. Yeah. You and got you him, Brian? This here. I, what, I, what's the character's name? Nah, forget it. I think it's. Uh, is it Sharts? G- Sharts? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Jimmy Kennedy. And now we get the last samurai scene. Which yeah. I love. So the he, watermelon slice. The watermelon slice. No, no, no. <laughs> no, when, no, no. Oh, oh, right. scene. When, uh, so he, he makes him reload his rifle. Uh-huh. Yes. And he's going to shoot the bottle. And he does again. it pretty quick. And he does it. And he's like, a yeah, nice shot. But yeah. then Matthew Broderick comes up behind him. The pistol. With the pistol and starts shooting it next to his head. <laughs> And it's like, do it again. Make him reload faster and faster. And we saw this exact scene, and we were gushing over it yep. when we talked about it way back when. And you know what? It worked then, it worked and it then. works now. It was even more. It's like he took this scene, Zwick. He took this scene that he did in Glory and doubled down on the last Because <laughs> now he's shooting at him. <laughs> he's like, I really know how to do it now. Teach, <laughs> teach him properly, Major. And yeah. then he realizes, oh, these guys are all going to see battle with the other Major. And now we get to the scene when he's riding, Matthew Broderick's riding on the horse, slicing watermelon. Sick. Now, was this an inside joke? <laughs> <laughs> Amongst the riders. I hope so. <laughs> right? I'm offended. <laughs> I, I did. I, I you think wondered. Melons about it. were the wrong choice. I think watermelon was <laughs> Maybe the pumpkins. wrong choice. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe pineapples, There's, you know. And I'll yeah. tell you this. There's it, a lot I of looked gourds into it. <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> Watermelons would not have been obtainable no, in Massachusetts yeah. at that point in January. You're so right. No, just gourds. You're just so it's right. January. Yeah. <laughs> You're so Those right. fucking racists. <laughs> <laughs> they, I feel like they knew what they're doing, and there's some sort of like statement there. You think it's like from the like the casting crew, the Maybe. destruction of racism. Maybe the racism. Like out. he's cutting out the stereotype. Mm. Or are we just like? Hitting for the, the home run here, and realistically, they're just racist assholes. <laughs> I really don't know. So now we get a scene when Robin Hood yells at Shaw. Did we have the scene in the tent yet with Morgan Freeman and Denzel, like our main cast? Yes. We skipped, yeah, we skipped over it. it. That's like is, a good scene. Is there something you want to really say about scene. it? Just that, like, it, it's great character stuff. Come got Morgan Freeman, who's like the voice of reason. He's like the older guy, wise. He's Morgan Freeman, always the wise old black man. He's God. He's there to tell you the truth. <laughs> Um, you have Denzel, who's angry guy, and just trying to fuck with everybody. Every everyone pisses him off. Hold on, I just thought about something. Sure. Why is there always a mute kid Hold in on. movies? Do yeah, the four too. black <laughs> leads <laughs> represent the different types of like black almost demographics you would have at that point in America? Well, you, oh, well. I never. I, this thought just came to me. I don't know how real it is, but you have the educated guy. Okay. Mm-hmm. You have the angry ex-slave. Okay. Right? You have a slave, ex-slave, who's not particularly an angry person. He's, Would you say he's, he's an uncle? Of wisdom. No, Would, I'm talking he, about um, the sh- Sharts. Oh. Okay. Well, he's like, he's almost a goofball. Yeah. yeah, but he's like an uneducated guy, right. you know? But he's not like, he doesn't have like the hate that Denzel has. Mm-hmm. And then uh, who, who, um, Morgan, Freeman, Morgan Freeman, an older man who's like been through a everything. lot of shit. He's yeah. learned everything. Um. It's an interesting take. But that's what they represent. I mean, yeah. I don't think there's any real life correspondence to that particular group of people. Okay, no, I'm just wondering if it's like a storytelling thing, or you know, or am I overthinking this? It is. A, it is a story. It, that's what it is. It's yeah. a storytelling. Th- ter- yeah. Oh, I don't story know if the writer's ideas was like we have to actually have every demographic because that would be a lot more. But yeah. you definitely got I'm overarching the, characteristics. The broad sense. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I, they represent. Of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, yeah, definitely. It, as far as the film's concerned, they are totems for, you know, everybody that would be there. Unfortunately, yeah. like like we said before, it's not accurate to reality because th- of the four characters, three of them are former slaves. Yeah. And that wouldn't have been the case in the 54th yeah. Regiment. Right. Um, you'd have a lot more Thomases. Have, yeah. A lot of Thomas. Uh, in, that converse, in that tent scene, uh, this is what we learned at Denzel's character. Um, was talking about uh, I guess down the road, there's a house that has uh, yes, yeah. like pumpkin pie, I think. And cornbread. Corn corn she was handing out food. Get some handing shoes. out food, new shoes. Yeah. And they're like, don't do it, N-word. They're liable, <laughs> shoot, they're liable, they're liable shoot you. <laughs> that's a, that's a more, uh, yeah, they warn shame. him. Don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. And who warns him? Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Morgan Freeman's like, you're, you're dumb if you do that. Because yeah. he's seen it. Uh, anyway, so... 
Robin Hood yells at Shaw. They have their thing. Mm -hmm. The training is happening, and Thomas is a shit soldier. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, what's the Irish guy's name? Forbes. Forbes. Major, Major Forbes. Major Forbes is like stab me, and yeah. Yeah. and Thomas is just weak and anemic. And he can't do it. He tries to get him with a bayonet. Which yep. This is also a little less samurai. It is. Go ahead and shoot me. <laughs> yeah. And oh, stab me. And Thomas <laughs> cries, and like he's all broken down. He's so good. And Denzel now is just being a dick to him. After this, yeah. Just bat like yeah. He goes and where forgot the duck. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny line. It was funny. Yeah. It's a ball breaker. And then Broadwick yeah. pops in right. And he goes. Sergeant, deal with that man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what does he do? I forgot. He what is uh, his punishment there? What is what happens? For speaking he, out? Well, he, well, he, I, he nothing. It was, it, was it was a talking to. It was just a talking to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now we get um it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. And you know, all the black soldiers are kind of, you know, having yeah. Christmas together. Matthew Broderick says Merry Christmas to Thomas, mm -hmm. and, like, it's well, Thomas nice. says it to him. Says it to him. There's it's multiple times before this where he's tried to talk to him. Yeah. And he won't do it. He makes him go through official mm -hmm. channels and stuff. What a dick, but, yeah. yeah. I guess you have that, to, yeah. He's making the yeah. chain of command. There's a purpose to Yeah, all, yeah, yeah. You know? And on Christmas, he's like, you could say Merry Christmas yes. to me. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Matthew Broderick says it back, and you could tell he's, like, happy he could do this yes, now. Yeah, right. Like, it's been hard on him. Mm -hmm. um, and now we find out that the black soldiers aren't allowed shoes. Well, something they're not allowed. Well, they're, they're not, not giving, giving, giving shoes. Well, yeah. Before that, not to, just a minor thing, he, he, we hear narration of Broderick talking, writing to his mother. Yes. And, is there, and he, he talks about, you know, Christmas, and then he says... I missed the days in Shaw Island, which I believe he meant to be Staten Island, because Robert Gould Shaw's family, at some point in time, had a home on Staten Island and are mostly buried on Staten Island. Do you know so, that's crazy? I knew that. Yeah. I didn't know Shaw Island. I, I didn't think put that together. I, th I think it is because it makes sense at, at the time of where he where he was in the world, like yeah. they were already living on Staten Island. You know, I won't stand You're for so the Staten Island erasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. All roads lead Staten to Staten Island. Staten Island deserves to be seen. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I was telling Brian, uh, I'm going to go on record and say R Robert Goldshaw is probably the greatest Staten Islander ever. He's not a Staten Island. He's from Massachusetts. Yeah, but he but he, he, he lived, lived here there. once. He He's lived not a Staten there. Island. He He's, was raised here. I'm from Brooklyn. So, <laughs> and I, and I lived there. Everybody <laughs> at this table is from, from Island. Brooklyn. I'm yeah. gonna say I'm not. you are. Oh, you were born upstate. I was born upstate. I did live in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna go. Over, I'm gonna say that Shaw was the greatest Staten Island. Greatest Staten Island. more than Cornelius Vanderbilt. Do we consider uh, yes. uh, Aaron Burr? <laughs> A Staten Island. No, player. no, he wasn't raised here. He's died a Jersey here. boy. Well, he ran away. He died here. here. <laughs> he, was, he was on the on the lamb here. <laughs> Imagine they remade this and like we need to do this with a, a new young person. What about the guy who invented Nilla wafers? Yeah. <laughs> ah. Imagine like we want to redo this movie and really capture the Stan Islandness of it, and yeah. they cast Pete Davidson yeah. as Shaw. He's like, bro, I ain't going up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm would, not fighting. I would, I would do everything in my power to sabotage that set. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Davidson is Stan Island's greatest man. <laughs> Robert Shaw. Um, Robert Shaw, by the way. Black life's a size. Like a doll size. Oh my size. god. <laughs> oh my how did I not make that connection? He's Quint. Yeah, it's Quint. <laughs> uh, right. Yes. Robert Gold Robert Shaw. Robert yeah. Shaw. <laughs> Who was drunk that entire shot, <laughs> film uh, uh, yeah, shoot, right? He was drunk a lot. Yeah. Uh, where are we in the movie? All right, so it's Christmas. So wait, uh, the shoes, the shoes. Shoes. Yeah. The Christmas shoes. <laughs> so Denzel <laughs> sneaks out to go to the Christmas shoes. <laughs> and he's waiting online, and there's a poor boy talking about his mother dying of cancer. <laughs> oh, God. And Denzel gets caught, and we get the whipping scene. Yes. Which we spoke about already. Is there anything else we need to talk I mean, about? It's not really. That's the, like you said, it's the Oscar scene. Oscar clip. This I is think, what uh, made him. Denzel like, has his famous tear. That was uh, that was this tough. This is why he's remembered as like yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah. In us. hindsight, though, this it was a good thing that happened because then it leads to the entire platoon getting shoes. Yes. Like in hindsight. Yeah. It's it's so difficult to see, and then you realize, okay, that sacrifice and punishment didn't go unrewarded. Shaw absolutely hates that that had to happen. 
Yes. Yeah, we, yeah. And he goes to Morgan Freeman to help. He's like, I need like a liaison mm-hmm. to the men. What do they need? How can I benefit them? Some shoes. He was and trying he to get we, shoes. We need, we need He's shoes. Like the boy was trying to get him some shoes. He wants shoes. to fight. Yes. He wasn't a deserter. He wants to fight. You're, you're just not giving us what we need. And that's when you're going to have desertion. This is like yeah. Shaw's moment of becoming like an actual leader. Yeah. You know, well, it, I th- you you know what? That's right. Yeah, I agree with you. It's the the three. This key, is the turning. There's point. three key moments. Yeah. It's the pay. It's this, which is coming up, and then it's the battle. The pay right? is the the finalization of him knowing his path, and that's what I was talking about before. Where I think he's kind of faking it till he makes it. This is him making it. Yes, this is, what, this is yeah. him turn amongst his, the men. Yes, right. The respect yeah. of the men because yeah. the pay is next, and then you realize, okay, he's stepping up to become their leader and be on the same level as them and he's ready to take up that role because the pay is next that that scene which mm-hmm. we also went over yeah but they dock the pay and uh there's like a riot almost well the next he stops it well mm-hmm. before that the quartermaster scene's great when yeah. broderick yeah. goes yeah. in and just starts it's smashing badass. everything well, you got that guy that was in every 90s movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah what's his name Can we look that up <laughs> <laughs> He's in everything. He was uh, the jump to conclusions Matt guy in Office Space. <laughs> is it Stephen Root? I don't know. No, that's but. no. That, but that is Stephen Root. But that, that, this actor isn't Stephen Root. Well, while you while you look that up, I actually found out what the president salary was back then for Lincoln. Yeah, twenty five thousand dollars a year. Is it Richard Re- Richard Re- Real Re- Real Richard yeah. Real? Wow, was the quartermaster? Sorry, what was the president? Uh, the president's salary was twenty five thousand dollars a year around then, which was equivalent to about four hundred fifty thousand dollars. And that's, that's what, what it is today. Makes sense. That's what which it is, is today. today. Yeah, it's about four hundred to four fifty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which I was shocked to read that. I'm like, but all wow. the presidents are making so much money from their freaking investments. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They're, well, yeah. They're corruption. They're, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you think about four hundred fifty thousand back, like twenty five thousand back then, I think went a lot further. Which is pretty crazy. Um, so th- then we get to the ripping up pay scene, which we discussed before. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't think we need. But that imagine you're a poor soldier there, and everyone is ripping up the <laughs> friggin' the checks around you, and you're just yeah, looking like, around. You're, you're like putting oh, it in your pocket. Damn, like, you're just, got it, just putting it in your oh, pocket. No. Like, you have that sound. <laughs> you have like a wife and kid at home, and you're like in this regiment, like with Broderick. You're like, ah, I'm fucking. I guess my I kids know. aren't eating. <laughs> just a thought I just had. I wonder if they got back pay for all the. Months they didn't ex- they didn't accept the pay. Mm. I'm I mean, sure they did. I mean, they, most, probably did. they probably they, did. They, they died. It took 18 yeah, months to yeah. get it. You're right. I bet a lot of them. Yeah, most the government was just like, don't gotta pay that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they That's why they, they did it. They're like, yeah. you know, if we have this regiment <laughs> wiped out at Fort Wagner, <laughs> we can cut the uh, the money we own. <laughs> we can save hundreds of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> so now we get the graduation scene. Which I love. Oh, it's uh-huh. cool. Where they're all marching through. Oh, through town. Through town. Yeah, that's re- that really happened. Oh, yep. yeah. That's and I love um, that great Forbes. Line. Look, that's gotta feel great for them. Oh, for yeah. like anybody, if you're right? You're a guy. Yeah. Like you've been through all this drilling, and then you mo- get to march through town. To, like everybody, like Douglas. Here we go. This Douglas is, for you. is up there. Yes. My favorite moment though is Forbes saluting the men. Like mm-hmm. he respects them. He loves them. Oh yeah. He loves them. He's like, I train these guys. Mm-hmm. They're legit. Yeah. Like, they are good soldiers. Mm-hmm. And we're ready for war. And, like, there's the little black kids, and Morgan Freeman's talking right. to them, like, you could do anything you put your mind to. I, You're not I, talking I, I wrote down the sees. quote. I'm trying to find it. That's right. He's like, we, we, mm-hmm. we, uh, we run away, slave, we come oh, back, fight, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a great line. Yeah. yeah. And then it's off to the south. It's off there, yep. yep. And now, boy, he, be- he gets uh, promoted. Well, right Sorry. away, right away, uh, Matthew Broderick goes to this ritzy party. And an officer's an officer's party. An officer's yeah, party, yeah. yeah. And they're like, you're never seeing action. Like, they laugh at him. You're going to come forge with us. <laughs> with, I think Montgomery was like, come, come and forge materials for us. Well, what well, about the racist stuff, the comments that people were making to him? Like, oh, I'm surprised. Oh, yeah. how, many, how many deserters you get? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, how many? Oh, we're surprised. Yeah. The yeah. casual 1860s racism, yeah. Yeah. you know? Well, they they do not have high opinions of these guys. No, <laughs> no, and that's why it's and so these important are the when they prove themselves. These are the they white change a lot of minds. Mm. These yeah. are the progressive liberals, by the way. You yeah. know, like yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing about this southern stuff, the movie does a terrible job of telling you where they are. They just say South Carolina. 
in reality? Because I was thinking as I was watching the movie, I was like, how could they possibly be in South Carolina? Lee's army is in the way. They went so far south, <laughs> you know, so fast. <laughs> They're actually um, on the islands outside of Charleston. Uh, Hilton Head? J- uh, Johnson, Johnson. Johnson. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah is, is where the battle happens later on. But they, they, they've actually been moving around several islands. Okay. They go on this foraging mission. Is that the where we're at? Yes. Yep, this yep. is it. Okay, so this is actually one of the more controversial moments in all of the Civil War. This particular moment? Yeah. So this guy Montgomery, mm-hmm. who I said before was the Jayhawker from Kansas, uh, he has his own black regiment. Who's his commanding general? Oh, God. Oh, uh, yeah. Is he a, is he a uh, not Lee, is he a... The guy in the movie? He's another it's, colonel. It's the guy from Ace Ventura, Pet Detective 2, When Nature Calls, who had the raven. Hello, Tiki. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I... But, like, who's his commanding general? Like, you know? I don't know of him. Okay. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. You know what I'm talking about? You know yes. Uh, general Charles Garrison. Okay, he's, he's with Garrison. All right. Um, yeah, so they go on this mission where they actually, they don't show it, but they take some ships down to Georgia, and they go to this town, Darien, mm-hmm. and when the townsfolk see that the Union soldiers have landed, they run. So it's mostly mm-hmm. evacuated. There's mm-hmm. a few people left behind. And Which like Kirk Cameron. They say that in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They meant, they're like, there's nobody here. There's like a couple of women and like right. two guys or something. You better fucking run. And <laughs> Montgomery <laughs> decides... That for really no real strategic reason, just to burn the town down and kill everyone that's left. No reason. I just like doing things <laughs> right. like that. And the movie does it perfectly. Uh, Shaw, just like in just like in the movie in real life, protests it, and he's like, "This is this is no reason for yeah. this." But the guy is his commanding officer, and he's forced to make the fifty fourth burn the town down. This is uh, controversial because they're black. Otherwise, it wouldn't be Sherman. Sherman burnt yeah, Georgia exactly. down. <laughs> But. Like this is like <laughs> Sherman and Grant are like that's late. It hasn't happened yet. Grant, That'll be the closing Grant act of the is war. One of my favorite people in the United States history, Grant Sherman, U- Ulysses S. Grant. Oh yeah, Grant um, is the fucking military man. genius. He is totally the man. Military genius, low key one of the best presidents we Absolutely. ever had. Absolutely, one hundred percent. He's actually legit the, a great, great man. Yeah, best <laughs> repo- probably one of the best Republican presidents. I think too. He's good. You don't <laughs> think he's good. one of the best? Um, oh, I mean, there's Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, gr- but I think I, I, Grant. Oh, man, did you watch that good miniseries point. on uh, on Grant? On I didn't see the miniseries. So I read, um, fucking good. I read that I did. audio book. How awesome was that? It was cool. <laughs> he was. He's. Ah, oh, you will love it. I'm a big Grant. <laughs> it's guy. it's uh, what's his name? The the guy uh, who wrote the, the Grant book and then the Washington. Book. Brandon Gleason? No, <laughs> not Brandon. <laughs> He'd play a good Grant, though. You're talking about Monk? What? Yeah, you don't think he'd play a good Grant? <laughs> Why does it always come He's, back to him? He can't not be Irish. <laughs> Why does it keep coming back to him? Every he time. was Irish in ancient Greece. <laughs> Who's the finest fighter in five points? <laughs> Yeah, he's, this is why you would have me fall. Like, That's an Irish accent. He's, what? Uh, but yeah, um, there's, there's Ron one, Chernow. There's one, Ron Chernow. Yes. Yeah. There's one scene uh, in that uh, when they burned a town where Montgomery kills one of his his soldiers. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he, has, he has that line, Secesh got to be wiped clean like the Jews of old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Jew see, God of old. See, if that Secesh woman hadn't done that, I wouldn't have had to resort to this. <laughs> Hard. Montgomery's Hard a wacko. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with his stupid straw hat. <laughs> he, had wall, he had like a feather in it for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Which like, well, he said he was from Kentucky originally. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing. He also said he owned slaves. Yeah, he said yes. that's like, interesting yeah, for, right. for a, an for anti-slavery man. Yeah, he's like, that's why I find it easy to control them. Yeah, it comes naturally to me. That's like, what? what are you it's talking like, about? Oh, boy, I think you're on the wrong side, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Take, that, take that uniform. <laughs> take that uniform out. Sesh more than anybody else. Well, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of people who like fought with the Union but are pro-slavery because they because they're loyal to the United bi- States. I would say right. probably business people. Well, right? it's it's a lot of that. It's like Grant himself was not an abolitionist until later in the war. Right. Like a lot of people just didn't like the idea 
of these people being traitors to the country. Yeah. But, like Grant himself, he was like, like he was, um, he spoke about this a lot and like had thoughts. He was like, the only country that, the only country, the only state that should be allowed to secede is Virginia because um, there was some reason he had. But I'm surprised because his father was big time. Grant's dad was big time anti slavery. Yeah. Know? Grant when, came around to when it. When you're, let's say... Uh, and his wife, too, yeah, right? Grant's, no, Grant's, Grant's philosophy was basically only th the original 13 colonies should have the right to Choose. secede. And that, like, if you came in, like... Because you opted into the You opted into this, now you fucking, mm -hmm. you have to abide by this shit. So he was more torn on it than people think. Where fighting to free the slaves is not going to get a lot of recruits from the North. It's just not. They yeah. don't care. What's going to get a lot of recruits these are traitors. is these people have insulted the flag and the Constitution, and we need to punish them for this. And that's, that is what got northern bodies in blue suits. And that's what pissed Grant off. Yeah. It wasn't about It didn't slavery. become this noble cause to free the slave until probably the, 14th, the 13th Amendment, which was in the very tail end of the war, when it was practically won already. Then they framed the war as like this glorious crusade. I guess that that makes Lincoln sense. himself was a gradual abolitionist. Yeah, who, who he was fighting as far as as far as slavery was concerned on, <coughs> on Lincoln's behalf. He was f didn't care. Well, he cared. He didn't like it, but he's like, I'm not trying to stop it where it already exists. He didn't want it spreading west because as new states came in, he was like, we cannot have more slave states. It's a blight. But as far as where it already existed, he was not going to do anything to stop it. Especially as you go west, because the climate gets warmer and warmer. It would make less sense. Slavery was already obsolete. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. It didn't make sense. Maybe it made sense, as, as evil as it is, economically, it worked in the early, early days. By the time of industrialization, this was just a blight on everything. You know, it, it colored all politics and all aspects of our society and it needed to go but yeah i don't know where i'm going with this help me. I, I understand <laughs> look it was it was economically beneficial unlike today where there are no slaves and there's no cheap labor working to make things or but you forget know about the moral there's part of, of slaves just not I'm, here I mean, that's, I'm, that's the joke i'm making yeah. you know there's there's still slaves in the world it's yeah. just they're not called slaves they're called Uyghur. uh you know. go, go to the middle east and tell yeah, me well, yeah slaves. there's slaves in the middle east too. <laughs> They're still there. Let's talk about a slave ship. There's slaves in some of these nail salons in uh, in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. We can go you like see that? four blocks yeah, four blo yeah. away. Let's yeah. go to the Newark container ships, yeah. crack a couple of those open, see what's in there. In Manhattan, in there's Man a lot of slaves. In Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> crack a couple open, like a six pack. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. Th 30 Chinese fucking laborers just ran out of here <laughs> trying to flee communism and go to a nail salon. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they all nail polish. We left out one thing too. I know, uh, okay. Early on, going back, but the first uh, use of the word "snowflake" is yes, used by Denzel. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> by Denzel. Oh yeah. <laughs> he calls uh, that uh, the the slow guy. Uh, with, uh, yeah. The guy with the, yeah. with a good shot, Charts. the crack shot. Yeah, Sharts. He calls him Snowflake. Is that, really, that can't be. His That's name. his name. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> his ancestor just shit himself a lot. Sharts got a new pair of blue pants. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing brown pants again. <laughs> so we have the burning of uh, Darian, and and you see the difference between the two the two platoons. Right. You right. know, you see that the, the Shaw's guys are their soldiers. They're going to obey. They're not going to be wild. They'll wait till their orders. And then you see the opposite, where it's just chaos. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how accurate that is, but it, from what I've read, it seems um, legit. Like, because Shaw said, like, this was a Satanist act, to quote him. Completely. Yeah, that's what he said yeah. about it. I'm going to be honest. I zoned out while you were talking, and I have no idea what you left. That's okay. We'll continue. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so now we get. Um, so now we get the uh, the black soldiers are being used for um, labor. Yeah, they're just like the 54. Yeah, it's like a montage, right? Yeah. Of, of it happening. And like Denzel great, is great stirring where, shit. Um, Trip gets angry. Yeah, with the, the, yeah. the guys going to battle or walking by, and he's yeah. breaking their balls. He's like, send us. We'll end it real quick. Yeah. And they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like they, and you could, they've just been in battle. I think I, they're going to battle. I'm not oh, they looked like mm -hmm. disheveled. 
They definitely looked the show. They, they weren't happy about wherever they were. Yeah. They they were the, the ones who pushed them back to the fort, and they're going to continue yeah. the battle. And did you recognize uh, one of the actors? No. Which one? The one yeah. f in the middle, right? The one in the middle. He said he 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 he, uh, he he says some a lot of men back there dying. He goes like yeah. that's all like a line. There's like men that. dying up that road. Yes, yeah. Yeah. that guy. Yeah. That guy is from Breaking Bad. Oh really? That is, wow. and Better Call Saul, and a number of other. Is films. he like a big character? He's like yes, he an is. old guy actor that you've seen in you've like seen a, him in a million, million things. things. His name's uh, his last name's Margolis. Um, Martin, Karen. Uh, he played an older man in this, and this is eighty nine, right? Yeah. <laughs> so how how right. old has he? Like, is how long has he been old? <laughs> We look pretty young, though. That's like a Walter Matthau. Mark Magolis. Yes. Mark yes. Magolis. <laughs> He's a great character in Better Call Saul and, and Breaking Bad, one of the bad guys. What's his character's name? Oh, jeez, I forgot. But he, he's uh, he's in, in he's in Scarface. Who's in Scarface? The Shadow. Is oh, he the okay. guy the guy in the <laughs> members only jacket and the sunglasses? I who think, shoots Tony I in the think, back. I think that's him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to fuck me, Tony. And uh, Don't ever try to fuck me. <laughs> in this scene, uh, Trip gets put into his place real quick. Oh, by, I love by, this. By Morgan Freeman. By Morgan Freeman. He's also in Pi, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Have seen the movie Pi? Pi's a good movie. And he yeah. was in Ace Ventura. Well, how many of these people are in Ace Ventura? Ventura. Yeah. And he was in Requiem for a Dream. And he was in Scott. Yeah, Scott Do Ford. not go in there. <laughs> 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 but I love yeah, Denzel. He's, he's like, so those funny. white men are fighting and dying for us. Yeah. Oh, and he so smacks good. Denzel. Right. He puts him in his place real quick. Yeah. And it's it's a it's actually a really powerful scene because you you, you get this like what do you actually want to be? You're going to be angry your whole life. Like right. what are you even fighting for? And the, he kind of just shuts up. And now Broderick goes to the um, the, officers. the officers and he's, he's like some leverage. I know you guys are looting. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Let the 54th fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the black Otherwise I will report you to the war, war department. Right. Yeah. And they're like fine, you could go fight. And that guy could play a tune. Was right? oh, yeah. the Glockenspiel? He's was that sitting in? there playing like the piano, or, and it's just like, he's like virtuoso. Yeah. <laughs> he basically, uh, Shaw goes in there and kind of throws his uh, weight around, Nate, dropping yeah, names. Dropping his dad's name. Dad's and name. Governor and everything. So he's like, he'll say, you know, he. He said he's going to write to Lincoln. How, right. Yeah. He was. Imagine that to go <laughs> fight, to actually, you know, bring your men to. They're ending. Yeah. Of all the things they're, they're forcing them not to do, right? it's die. Right. <laughs> but we want to. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? So amazing. It's it's honor. Right. It's yeah. glory. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but it's also a proving ground. Well, you know? they need to. Yes. To prove that this is. Uh, this hasn't been for nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, then we get another last samurai scene. <laughs> So yeah. we got James Island, 1863. <laughs> it's action time, boys. This yeah. is a great battle. It's so good. I love it's the way. Such a chaotic. I love the way oh, you see the uh, Confederates coming mm -hmm. through. Last time, like, stuff. Yeah, coming he through the mist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I love when they get to the point where they're like close and in front of each other. Mm -hmm. They all just start. It's just go it's like forget the bullets. We're going to bayonets. Yeah. Well, they at first they're yeah. just shooting like from like where me and you are across right. from each other. I feel like that was so accurate. Oh, Because, you know, don't fire until you see the mm -hmm. whites of their yeah. eyes. Like, like, That's crazy. Out of all this, I, I didn't see many Civil War movies, but, like, most of the scenes, you don't get that, like, close distance that you yeah. see. And the way they did the smoke, specifically, mm -hmm. I loved. Because after the first volley, like, a couple of, you, you get a couple of accounts at that time, you can't see anything. This is before the invention of smokeless powder. So yeah. It yeah. would have been a smoky mess. You couldn't see your hand in front right. of your face. And they do the that. Of, of guns going yeah, off. They do that. And um, you just you see that volley, and then it's just like you don't see anything else mm -hmm. until it slightly clears. You see like the outlines of the, the Confederates, and they're just aiming, and you're like, oh, yeah, it's this done is great. so good. And that, um, and that charge. Yeah. 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 Quick it's thing fun. about this battle um, like I said, they're on these islands, mm -hmm. James Island. Yeah. And yeah. It's it's very obvious to the Confederates what's happening here. The Union is setting up to try and dislodge Charleston from the sea, so they're they're on these islands and they're trying to set up for uh, to attack it. And Charleston has all these forts in the harbor, and they like Sumter being the famous one, uh, and what's the name of Wadsworth? Uh, no, uh, uh, Fort uh, Wagner. Fort Wagner. <laughs> Staten Island, they got that far yeah. up. <laughs> so what they've done is they've back. sent men onto the island to try and dislodge the Union men from, like, they're, this is a sneak attack. 
So they've landed and they're attacking the Union guys. And it's a surprise. And the 54th actually saves another white regiment. They, they handle themselves perfectly. And they, they hold off this attack. And then the white regiment is able to kind of escape where they were going to be destroyed. And then reinforce them, and that's what happens at the last second there. Like when every when it, when it dissolves into this big melee, they come back. They the the yeah. reinforcements. You see the up. Confederates yeah, running and they away. Have to run away, and yeah. they're saying, "Run them down! Run them yeah, down!" Yeah, yeah, skirmishers. So yeah. now the fifty fourth. But is nobody hears about this because something just happened. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the the two big turning points of the war happen happen uh, right at the same time. Thomas same gets time hit here. I was scared. Well, Thomas gets shot in the movie. You don't want to lose he, And he also saves... And he uh, saves Denzel. Denzel. Yeah, you, Who has been given his ass this whole movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a badass. He was a badass. Thomas guy. is a good dude. Yeah. And now... Um, Vic, uh, he's like a funny guy on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, right? I don't yes, watch that. He's Cap- Captain Holt. Mm-hmm. He's hysterical in that, but I want to just mention the numbers here of this battle. Sure. So, uh, which I think it's... Uh, it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the Union, there was 1,200. Okay. Confederates was 306. 306? Uh, 306, but only 161 engaged. But they had similar losses. Mm-hmm. There was uh, 20 killed on both sides and between 70 and 80 wounded. So when you think about the, that reinforcement line, the Confederates were doing damage yeah. until the reinforcements got there. Massively. Then, you know. it's, like a, it's like a raid. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, I found that interesting that it was almost the exact same amount killed. <laughs> Wow. What were you about to say, Brain? Yeah. So, next scene. scene, uh, Well, Gettysburg and Vicksburg Vicksburg have happened. Vitz uh, operation, it's the Anaconda plan. Yes. So, Vicksburg. Love the Anaconda plan. I'm so happy you know that. Hell yeah, man. (laughs) (laughs) So. Is that uh, the plan where they send Jennifer Lopez in? Yeah. (laughs) With the scientists. They send John Voight. (laughs) They cover cover two people in monkey blood. Right. (laughs) Monkey blood. Babis. Babis. So young. Yes, so lit. Oh, no, they don't. (laughs) 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 Fucking love Anaconda. That's great. (laughs) But basically, the plan is to use Vicksburg. To cut the South in half. The Anaconda Plan is the Yo, North, you know more details. The North strategy to strangle the South economy. Yes. And the way to do this is to blockade Isolate. the entire region with by ships. So the entire coastline has Union ships going up and down because the Confederate ha- don't have much of a navy. They eventually get some ironclads later on, but we're not to low effect. The blockade is working. The other part you need to do is control the entire Mississippi River. And if you do this, you cut Texas off. Texas is the big thing they're cutting off with the Anaconda Plan. And you you have them completely isolated from the rest of the world. So... It's a matter of time at that point. Once, Vicksburg is more important than Gettysburg. As far as that's concerned, yes. Gettysburg is a defensive move. You know, Lee has invaded the North. He's going well, to capture Washington, Well, if Gettysburg happens, they have a straight was, run. I think he was going to try to get... I remember when I was at Gettysburg, like when I went there, they were talking about the nearest town, because they were like... His soldiers were in bad shape by the time they got to Gettysburg. Mm-hmm. They were they were thinking about that they were probably trying to get to... Um, what is that name? Hershey, the Great Bear. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. For, oh, what the fuck? Harrisburg. They were going to try to get into Harrisburg. Totally in play. And... Uh, uh, get resupply. Yeah. So it I like mean, shoes and cl- like shit like that. Like right. It, let's say Gettysburg goes the other way, mm-hmm. and Lee's army wins. Now he is threatening Washington D.C., Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, Philadelphia, and if he wants to go fucking crazy, New York City. There's nothing standing his way, in his way from marching all the way. Well, you know why he didn't go to shit. New York. Nah. In New York, New York, you mess with one of us, oh, you mess with all of us. <laughs> trying to Ain't save happen, a guy, bro. trying to save a bunch of slaves. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't never getting on Staten Island. Nah. I'll tell him that much. It right. would have been, you know, burning the the burning of Georgia in reverse. Mm. <laughs> that would have been a war winning move. Um, but Vicksburg, like you said, yeah, if they that was the final because they'd already taken New Orleans and come up from the south, they come from the north. Once they took Vicksburg. The entire Mississippi is in is in Union hands, and that's just Grant being a genius. Yes, mm-hmm. like he handles Vicksburg perfectly, mm-hmm. and you know, unconditional surrender. Oh, he's all S. Grant. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you, 
You know that was not his his. Uh, the it's S. not his birth name. Yeah, the S wasn't. It's not. No, no. It was a mistake on mm-hmm. his on when he when he registered. They, he just kept it. So they, they use it as a marketing tool for him. Ah, it's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's better. Grant's Helped him fucking in pr- awesome. His president yeah. run. Yeah. Now what, he he kind of got screwed by his, by the Democrats and as president. There was a lot of corruption going on. I mean, it's politics. There's always yeah. fucking. He got, he got yeah. Oh, his own party was. He like, was a handshake his own con- guy. His own like, administration was doing yeah. all kinds of bad. His, yeah. of his Indian fr- affairs and. He was like a that. decent man, but so, he 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 was like a handshake type guy, and you can't have you can't be like that. You got to be right throughout you know. throughout Grant's life. His big problem is that he was the most trusting kind yes. dude ever. Yes. And it burnt him financially and he ended his life like destitute and broke. Because he would just get suckered in with deals and yeah. shit. Like That's why it was so important for him to write his memoirs. That's because that was just to fund like the sale of that was gonna fund his family. And it was a huge bestseller too. Do you of course. Th- do you think? Cause he was a type of guy where when they would surrender he would just have the officers like give their you know their their side arms and then everybody else. All right, guys, just go home. Mm-hmm. You know, rebuild your your you know rebuild uh, the the country. You think if he would have fucking executed every single one of those <laughs> those guys, there would have been no uh, Ku Klux Klan? No, it, it no, I'll tell a, you what. Please, because I that's my thing with Appomattox him. Courthouse, eighteen sixty five. Lee surrenders to Grant. Yep. yep. Let's say he insults Lee. Lee doesn't turn around and tell his soldiers, go home, the war is over, return peacefully. He tells his soldiers, go become guerrilla bands. Now you have guerrilla warfare in the United States for the next 50 years. You have an unfunctioning country. It turned to Afghanistan. But did it really? It would have. That's what I'm saying. Lee instead, in real life, what happened was he went, the war is over, you have my blessing, return home with honor. But after the, the war... And there was like this uh, black, uh, well, Klu- I guess, a renaissance that was all crushed by Ku Klux well, I mean, Klan, Grant put, all that stuff. Rand actually killed the Ku Klux he, Klan he in the 1870s. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He oh, yeah. put it down. Oh, but all the Confederate soldiers that he pretty much let go, mm-hmm. they came back as Klansmen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying but he should have fucking don't, killed all of them. They was, you can't. I mean, it's horrible. You it's horrible. You would have you, you, you would have made. Nobody can surrender that. Yeah. You right. would've, yeah, you would have made. Just, there is no surrender. You, you all fucking no, die. You, you would have just created a ton of martyrs. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got to understand the level of hatred. Not if we do genocide. Yeah, not if we do genocide, these fuckers. Yeah. Genocide, always the solution. Always the solution. <laughs> so snip. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <a> clip. <laughs> yeah. So um where are we now? All right. So it's uh Matthew Broderick and Denzel have a conversation. Oh, yeah. And Denzel is like, I ain't never lifting your flag. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, so fuck right. you and your country. He's so mm. right. Yeah. <laughs> and from Matthew, his perspective, yeah, he's, yeah, right. he's got a he's legitimate right. chip on his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> and Matthew Broderick is like, okay, then, I get it. Then don't like it's yeah. fine. He says, uh, like, there's nothing for me. Like, after this, there's no home, there's I don't, no job. Yeah. Like, he's like, there's nothing. I have, yeah. I have there, I have a dead end after and this. And do you mm-hmm. think that um, Shaw at this point, Broderick, was saying to himself, like, we're, all, we're probably all going to die, dude. <laughs> like, like, no. Or do you no. think he was a little more confident? He hasn't, that- he hasn't committed to that final battle yet. They don't know that's about to happen at that point. Mm. It's like the next day, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's actually the next scene is them like it's Fort Wagner, it's them yeah. on the beach. On like the beach. this is what we're doing. This mm-hmm. is what's gonna happen. We get J. O. Sanders, the general. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, big, ca- he's from the Big Green and Angels in the Outfield. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like casualties are gonna be extreme, and you know. They have to go down this narrow strip of sand. They have marshes to their right and the sea to their left. Just run on a beach. Um, I don't. It's just stupid nitpicking. In reality, they were coming from the other direction, so the sea yep. has been on the right. <laughs> yeah, it's, com- it's, it's completely same. opposite. It's but for the movie, it really doesn't matter. The same thing happened. Actually, I feel like this was pretty. The bad. This battle scene, I felt like it was very accurate from what I read. Like they, he, they they hit it straight on. The fifty fourth was the ones in there, mm-hmm. and Bef- exactly what went down happened. Before we miss out a, 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 a one mark, uh, what they read before they go march in, 
Uh, that we see those two guys that they were fighting with early on. No, no, not that. Not that. Not the that. marching. Next. The marching. The, 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 mar- the marching, the guys that they had fought with earlier. Um, we see them again, uh, and uh, they make eye contact. Uh, the guy who was fighting with Denzel makes eye contact with him. He's like, give him hell, 54th. They all cheer. Yeah, oh, they yeah, all cheer. Yeah, right when they're nice. about to. That yeah. scene gets me yeah. emotional. Yeah, 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 yeah that's a good It's like, we respect you now. Yep. Yeah. The, the campfire <laughs> scene got me more, though. He the took all the animals all of them. two by two. Because they know, <laughs> like, they know that like this is probably the last moment for a lot of us. Well, my uh, love, <laughs> so good. love, love, love. <laughs> <laughs> But Denzel's you know performance that, here was like, You know that wow. there's some soldier who's in there. He's like, did we have, really have to did volunteer? We really got to fucking see. We had to volunteer for the suicide <laughs> mission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, we just did good. What, what's going on? He didn't volunteer for it in real life. He was ordered. Nope. Yep. Shaw? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is this kind of like that South Park joke? From uh, <laughs> from the movie, I from don't the movie, to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the operation name, <laughs> you know. Protect all tanks and planes too, and they're just <laughs> onto the tank. <laughs> Is this kind of like that? This mission? No, I don't it think so. Very well made. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't. From That's what I read, I I don't believe so. I it said that this actually like led to the. The betterment of the military in general because they were 100% like 100 it did yeah and on top of that this from when they saved the other squad it showed that they're ready for battle and yes. that they can they, can they are soldiers. a hardened soldier group and they were probably one of the bigger ones there around the time mm-hmm. because if you look at the losses leading up to that you had like a third of their losses and another third and they were the ones that were constantly fighting this was the the one troop that was in one battle did great so it's like let's spearhead them. I think it's it's pertinent just to say that when Shaw told his men what they were about to do, and remember, they had just been in battle two days earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, most of them hadn't slept. Yep. He asked them, uh, is there any man who doesn't want to be sleeping in Fort Wagner tonight, on the morning of the battle? In real life. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they all cheered, like, let's fucking go. Yeah. Okay. Every single yeah. man. They, they, so everybody knew what they were in for, and they were ready to rock. All right. <laughs> now we're going to kick some ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now the movie, it's time. Uh, Is the music in the scene incredibly distracting? Hold on. Throughout so the whole, Throughout the whole movie, the music is a little distracting. The music stinks. <laughs> yeah. It's the biggest problem in the movie. Yes. Yeah. And I like James Horner, and I think he's usually good. Mm-hmm. The music, like, takes you out constantly. Yes. And it's so... It it's doesn't like, fit. It's like a parody if I was trying to make you emotional. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or is that just because we're spoiled? No, it's you watch movies and you know this is something doesn't feel right here. <laughs> it's not like yeah, you're right. Like we, we saw Last Samurai, I, you know, and it gets me emotional every time. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. The music just like takes you out a little, I I feel. Yeah, but you know what they do good in this? They don't play music over the battle scenes. And I love that I love that choice because the music kind of takes out a lot of the scenes but during these battles there's no music going on it's it's a lot of yelling it's a lot of explosions a lot of like chaos I think I'm crazy yeah and I don't want to hear your opinions so okay I have memories um, of watching this movie on television years ago and the final battle scene the entire scene has the fucking famous piece of music uh, okay. In this last viewing, it wasn't there, and I was waiting for it to start. <laughs> and I was like, "Where is it?" It's in the trailer. It's, it's in, in the, the trailer. trailer. Yeah, it's too. not in the battle scene. But I never saw the fucking trailer. I saw the movie, and I knew that that was in it. Did they like re put this out without no. the music? I don't think so. Why would they do that? I don't know. Why? Well, because it was bad. You got, you, you've seen <laughs> the movie a lot, right? I've seen it. Yeah, but. It, I don't. I don't remember the trailer, but if I'm you're not, saying that, but that music piece, that's I, I, that's probably a copyright-free uh, classical piece of music, right? Isn't I it? I feel like it. But it would be and in perpetuity. It is in the it, movie at one point. If but anybody out there knows what the fuck I'm talking about, yeah. please tell me, because it was driving me crazy. Do you think you're having a <laughs> Mandela effect moment? Maybe it's possible. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, we gotta look into that. Maybe Nelson it is. Mandela. Nelson Mandela, Mandela effect. effect. All right. So <laughs> it's action scene time. Matthew Broderick gives his letters 
to a p- person, and he's like From Harper's n- Weekly. Yeah, and he's like, journalist. make sure these yeah. letters get out there. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we know the letters are where we got a lot, lot of information build up. about him and for the movie. This fucking build yeah. up. It this gets is, this you is so sad. It's so sad. It's like you know, it's kind of, it's like these guys. Are so they all brave. know too. They're so brave. They're so brave. <laughs> who will carry They're the so flag? Glorious. Why is this happening? If this man falls, who will carry the uh, the, the the company's what? colors? That he says. Who will flag? carry the flag? Yeah. The flag. And yeah. Thomas is like, I will. Got this. And it's like, okay, awesome. Here's where we got to talk about William Carney. Okay. You guys know about this? No. William Carney. He is not in the movie. Is he the I one have no one? idea why. He won the medal? He is the first black recipient yeah. of the Medal of Honor. Yeah. Okay. From this? Um, from the 54th? From the 54th. 54th. At this battle. Wow. The man he carrying... He was in the back. That's why he lived. <laughs> <laughs> he lived. Because <laughs> <laughs> over half the, the, the ranks, they died. The man the carrying the flag goes down. He okay. sees the guy get shot. He picks up the flag. He makes it to the top of the parapet. Wow. This shows the world that the 54th made it to the top because they can see it from afar. He takes two bullets. Uh, I'm sorry, three bullets and is forced to retreat. The flag never hits the ground. William Carney wins the Medal of Honor for his efforts that day. Does he die? Four. Nope. Lived. That's pretty cool. Why is that Sick. not Denzel? Sick. Because in the movie... Should have been Denzel. In the movie, we see Denzel pick up the flag, and he leads the charge. Yeah. Why not have him at the top of the hill taking those bullets, holding the flag? He, but, in, but for the you know for the effect of the film... Denzel needs to be a slave. Well, I know. well, here's the thing. Like, Shaw was... Tom was it Thomas got shot. Thomas gets shot, and then yeah. and then uh, what do you call it? Shaw picks up the flag yeah. and is immediately shot and killed. Well, he leads the charge himself. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly how he that died. He led yeah. from the yes, front. he died early on too. He's the first guy, the first guy to yeah. die. So um, sick. And you don't fucking see that today. Like you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. fucking colonel. Like you know. Yep. But I, um, yeah. but then you see Denzel. Pick up the flag, very emotional moment. He picks it up for him, and then he gets shot, and he and he dies, and they then die. they're done. Mm-hmm. And then they, they, I guess they try to. Well, there's raid. there's a moment where it looks like they're actually gonna win. Like they yeah. start kicking yeah. ass, and they turn like a corner, and it's like Morgan Howitzers. Freeman, the jaws of hell, and they turn Howitzers. a corner, and it's just howitzers, and they're yeah. done. Yeah. Now that's actually fairly accurate from what I read. Yeah, this is yeah. this, this whole was scene so is perfect. Accurate. Um, I think the the amount of time from when Shaw fell and they retreated was not far. Like, it was very short. Like, he fell, the howitzers hit, and they were out. Which is why, because what was the point of the attack was to just buy enough time for reinforcements to the New York. Their job was to punch a hole. It was like a New York 19th or something. And then flood the rest of, like, whatever hole they open, just pour guys into it. Which they never did. And this is the only, I think it was the only fort. That in the South that wasn't taken. And you're ready for some numbers? Charleston never <laughs> fell. <laughs> yeah. These numbers were brutal. Yeah. So uh, the battle for Fort Wagner was 5,000 Union versus 1,800 Confederates. The losses for the Union, 1,500 Confederate casualties, 174. Yeah. yeah. Hide behind Completely those fucking walls. Oof. Yeah. Um, that is just heartbreaking. I think the 54th itself, I think I wrote down the number somewhere. Yeah. 272 killed. Killed, wounded, or captured at Fort Wagner. Yeah. Uh, as we know, the wounded and the captured are not going to be treated very well. No. no. Um, yeah, it was it was a bloodbath. But they gained glory. They did. Yep. We lost a lot of they good characters and men there. <laughs> and what is the legacy here? It's Well, before that. Yes. There's a mass grave. Ah, yeah. It's a great scene, another emotional tearjerker uh, scene. They're throwing all the black yep. soldiers into this mass grave. Mm-hmm. Taking their boots. Taking their boots. And we see Shaw being f- thrown into the grave. With and his men. With his men. And then we see Denzel's body fall on top of his right. together. Fate to black. Yes. Uh, in real life... Mm-hmm. Um, the South considered this as a disrespect to have a white soldier to be buried in a, in a mass grave with, with black right. men. And Shaw's family, yep. they were like, this is awesome. There's no better way for our son to be buried and remembered than with his with men. With his men. Sick. Years, so years later, a young Chris Ladondo was working <laughs> security <laughs> for a security company at Moravian Cemetery on Staten Island after seeing this film maybe for the second time in mm-hmm. 1997. And what do you Did call Did you see this in theaters? 
I don't think so. Maybe no, nah, I don't. I don't remember seeing it in the theater. Mm. Um, driving on my uh, in my car, uh, patrolling the cemetery with some famous Staten Island, well, Martin Scorsese's mom, <laughs> Paul Castellano, <laughs> his driver. The Vanderbilts, <laughs> the Vanderbilts. Oh, I got <laughs> the Vanderbilts <laughs> and their giant mausoleum. <laughs> their giant mausoleum. That's, that's at the bottom of your list before uh, Castellano. Yeah, before Castellano. <laughs> <laughs> about famous Staten Islanders. And I'm driving around, and I had had it in the back of my mind about uh, about uh, Shaw possibly be buried on on Staten Island. And I see a tombstone in the corner of my eyes. I'm driving. It says Shaw. I stop my car. I run to the this gravestone and I believe it was his sister I think mm -hmm. and I saw all these Shaw like you know tombstones I'm looking for him and I see like this four foot high like uh, uh, monument and it says in loving memory of Lieutenant Robert Goodshaw wow. born uh, Massachusetts whatever it was 18 mm -hmm. died Fort Wagner uh, 1863 and I'm looking down and like and it, at the time it said this it's been changed I think a number of times and it says and there Buried with his men. So it's, that's so cool. It's just it was, a monument. It was a guy. I got a little lump in my throat. Yeah, it was, yeah I, that's and, so cool. But later on, his remains would actually be transported with uh, the mass graves they dug they up. Dug it up, and they and they put it. It's I forgot the the cemetery, but somewhere close in the south over there. They they put it oh, all okay. in like right a right military. Oh yeah, it's probably so, a military yeah. cemetery. Sorry, Ryan. No, no, no. Of? I wasn't gonna say anything. No, that's so <clears> cool. All roads lead back to Staten Island. Staten Island. <laughs> Did you see his ghost? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I did not. Civil War, most ghosts. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You always hear about good Civil War ghosts. You know, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. another Staten Island uh, story about Civil War ghosts by by uh, the Chrysler Mansion, the... Um, Old Bermuda Inn? Yeah, the Old Bermuda Inn. Yep. I don't know if that's... So the Folklore. story, you, the story yeah, yeah. there is there's a there's an old Bermuda Inn on Staten mm -hmm. Island. Yes. It's now a restaurant. Restaurant. Uh, Catering, yeah. Catering yes. hall. We restaurant. had my uh, rehearsal dinner there. <laughs> yes. yeah. Well, there's two. Well, there's the old Bermuda Inn where right. it's like an old like inn, <laughs> yes. and attached to it is this giant Guido Ginza, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, big uh, hall. That I mean, very, very, very beautiful. When you walk into the main entrance of the old Bermuda Inn, there's a giant portrait of a woman from the 1860s. Mm -hmm. And the story is that her lover, her boyfriend, went down to fight in the war and never came back. Mm -hmm. And her ghost is still waiting for him to return as she walks the halls of the old Bermuda Inn. And there's a stain, a candle stain yeah, on a uh, uh, drip of candle wax that she like supposedly levitated a candle and it wound and up on her painting. Part of the and and a, and a light flickers in the... Uh, in the chandelier there, which, you know, just bad electric. You yeah. Know, like, <laughs> but, like, it's, it's an old inn. Yeah, it's an old inn. Uh, but, uh, yeah. There's a lot of stories that you get out of there of, like, haunting things. And mm -hmm. you can look it up on the internet if you really want. I don't have any, like, off the top of my head. But my cousin used to work there, and he would he would come home with some he stuff. See stuff? Yeah, yeah you, you get Chrysler Mansion, too. Yeah. Down the block. I know some people that worked there, because at one point, that was actually a, a restaurant for several years. Yeah. It was like a, a mob hit that was done there. Oh, they yeah. found a body in the fun. furnace. In the yeah. <laughs> also, fun fact, uh, it was paid for to, to redo that whole place when they were like knocking the walls down. They found an Honest Wagner baseball card. Oh, that They really? wind up selling. And put, yeah. <laughs> I remember reading that in the Staten Island events, too. Every few months or so, I will go on YouTube and just type Staten Island into YouTube and see what pops up. Mm -hmm. And um, the last time I did this, I found a video of Ozzy Osbourne's son, uh, Jack, mm -hmm. and some girl going on a ghost hunt in Chrysler Mansion. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> they should have did They're walking them. around in the closets with like a radio that's set to static. They should have. <laughs> you hear that? Around. It's a voice. <laughs> farm, colony is, <laughs> farm Colony is better for that. I've been, I've been on there. That's oh, crazy. we've all yeah. been there. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not the, the most fun, but we have a, a good friend of ours, like, including you, you got obsessed with like the, the haunted history of Staten Island almost. And, oh uh, yeah, we're called, I, there's a there's a loving name for it. <laughs> what the farm the, colony? No, no, the woods in general of Staten Island, uh, the dead woods. Oh, uh, yeah. the the Lenape, the natives used to call Staten Island the island of bad woods. 
I was like, I usually call it the island of failure. <laughs> the island where dreams go to die. <laughs> it's not an island. We had the world's largest dump. We did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> you could see it from space. Remember they said <laughs> that and they, the pyramids. I remember when I was a kid. If you can see from space the this pyramids and the Staten Island dump, the only two man-made objects. Oh, and the Great Wall of China. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's well, great, we're on great the list. list. Yeah, we're on the list. <laughs> I was only for years. Happy. I thought that was true. Like it's not was, probably not I heard true. That when I was a kid, it's probably not. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> you can <laughs> see the garbage like touching the sky yeah. as you drove around Staten Island. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Dumb Guido kids. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Oh, I believed it too. <laughs> I thought I was like proud of it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when they used to really bring the garbage there and it got like hot? And like it would stink in the summer. You wake up in the summer and the smell would just fucking punch you in the face as you woke up or you walked out of your house. Yeah, it was awful. And then they closed it in 2001. Mm. Now it's a park. Now it's a park. Yeah. All right. So as a result of uh, Glory and the soldiers, they they opened the door for black recruitment. 180,000 black soldiers joined or volunteered after this. Now, they also say that Lincoln attributed this yep. moment to like winning the war because it actually showed that we could have black soldiers in the army and blah blah blah. But you he said he made this was no bones about it. He he said that the black soldiers made a the the new recruits made a was like a war winning okay. thing. Right, right. He did say that. Yeah. Yeah. But you like said this made was all also the uh, the like at this point of the war. It was sixty three. Post Gettysburg. We still had another entire year and a half to go. Yeah, so it definitely helped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. There's a lot of fighting to be done still. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, they. it's... There's a lot of blood that still has to be shed to get uh, across the goal line. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But, but this was pivotal. So. Big, big turning point. Change in American culture and society. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know? Oh. That, like... If you could be trained in fight, mm-hmm. you know, regardless of who you are. But uh, what are your thoughts on the movie overall? What are you rated it? Okay. And is this better than Last Samurai? No. <laughs> That's the important question. <laughs> what is that? That's get him. Get him. In the I'm room. guessing that the Rangers are playing <laughs> and um, doing well. <laughs> oh, my God. Like it a is woman not screaming. better than Last Samurai. Last Samurai. I thought it was. I thought it was a woman's um, Does she need help? <laughs> Glory. Like I said, I had a little bit of a slog moment there early on. It's a great movie, but it is not one of the best movies ever. You hear that? Oh, that's me. There is so much happening right now. Yeah. (laughs) The the Rangers are winning in a shootout. I'm guessing he's on a tape delay. Oh, okay. That makes sense. They lose. Yeah, uh, seven. Okay, seven, seven out of ten. Okay, that 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 is a uh, respectable. Uh, I guess my turn, huh? Yep. All right. Uh, I think this is one of the more historically accurate films we watched, even though there was a lot exaggerated or misconstrued. But for the for the action sequences and the battles, I feel like that was like really spot on. Uh, the losses of the characters hurt. I thought the character building was great. I thought it was amazing. I didn't like the soundtrack too much. Soundtrack stinks. Uh, but I gave it a, a pretty high rating. I gave it a 9 out of 10. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I loved That's it. That's big. Uh, the reason why I had to take off a point, I was going to do 9.5. Too many I blacks. Re- I realized the music wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to... <laughs> I, I think um, not enough watermelons. So why'd you ha- why'd you have to take out take off a point? In a lot of these movies, they show two sides, and this was all just like the story of this. I would have loved to see the like so- the, the other side just to just to get a little bit more understanding. I don't think it needs. It's that. not necessary for this yeah. movie. It's not. Part last, of I disagree. Last summer, I had it. <laughs> <laughs> last Samurai. It's a different movie. It's a different yeah. movie. It would have made it really long, and it it's definitely not. Necessary, necessary, but yeah, I would have liked to see Samurai, it. That's the all. audience that's intended to watch that doesn't know the history behind it. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, sure. Yeah. The, the, with this, you know, this is a movie for Americans. Everybody knows the Civil War story. Yeah, and like, you know? and like, here's the thing with this. That's why we didn't have to go into the causes of the Civil exactly. War when we talked about. And it. And it's like, sure. and like, here's the thing. 
like this has a change in the South, too, because by the end of the Civil War, there's black people fighting on the side of the Confederates. Very few. It happens. Yeah. They, you know, Robert E. Lee, uh, Jefferson Davis was against it, and Robert E. Lee was like, we have we're to get out of human beings. We're out of human beings. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, we have to say, if these people fight with us and we manage to win, you're free. Or surrender. And, like, they, they did. It happened, you know? So what about and you? And if, if this doesn't happen, does he even think that, you know? No. I, I, that was an act of pure desperation. Well, that's desperation, but is that even in his head at all, you know? I, I think it, you'd have to draw that conclusion. I don't know if this affected that. I'm, I can't say that. Well, I, I think it did. I mean, there's no proof. Right. But that's just my punch. What, uh, yeah. What um, do you think? I'm going to say, I've seen this film a million times. Early on, uh, when I when I first saw it, I'd probably be around like a nine like, like you. But watching it over and over again, still great. But I, it's it seems like it doesn't hold. I'm comparing it to other war films. And like Platoon is older, and it's like a much better war film. Like everything about it is just like better. Um, Saving Private Ryan. I think I like uh, this better than Platoon. Really? I, li- I like this better than Platoon. You know, I was obsessed when I was younger with the Vietnam War. <laughs> I don't know why. Cause it was like it was so many films that came out like in the eighties about the Vietnam War. Full Metal uh, Jacket or Platoon? Platoon. Full Metal Jacket. See, uh-huh. Kubrick is a whole different animal. I don't mm-hmm. look at that. If that's a Vietnam film, but I don't look at that as a Vietnam film. That's a Kubrick art house film. <laughs> Fair, <laughs> okay, yeah. I Fair can understand you know, that. You know, um, I'm gonna go with a, a, a seven. Um, because it's kind of more held up to be more of like a made-for-TV film. Vibe-ish. Okay. <laughs> Vibe-ish. That's how I always looked at it, because that's where I saw it. It's a great TNT movie. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. but I but if you asked me this in 1989, oh, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. I'm in know. 1989 right now. What can I say? It's so um, jarring watching, because it's, it's not an... A ridiculously old movie like something from the 60s or 70s. It's 89. It's right before kind of movie making changes completely, mm-hmm. especially concerning war movies. And it looks so dated now compared yes. to what war movies became. And just you like, like look, at, look at Saving yeah. Private Ryan and yeah. Glory. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was less than 10 years later. It was like we, ha- we haven't had a great Civil War movie post Ryan. That's what I was saying. I would love to see what one looks like. With that gritty saying, like there cinematography, is, um, we get enough funding. The opening <laughs> make it. battle, which is very short in Lincoln, okay, is excellent. I haven't seen Lincoln in a while. But I don't even remember that scene. It's That's the it. first yeah. scene in the movie. I don't it's even a, remember a fight. It. That's it. It's Lincoln very was more short. of a talkie. <laughs> yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. definitely. That's all I remember for Spielberg's. Like I'm going to give you a history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, my rating. Yeah. I give this an eight. Okay. Really good, enjoyable movie. I think everyone is kind of, you know, at almost the peak of their powers. I think this is excellent practice for Zwick so he can later so make Last Samurai. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I know what to do now. I'm going to do it again. I mean, <laughs> was it Zwick? Oh, okay. I'm thinking of Freddie Francis. Freddie Francis did. is a cinematographer. Yeah, he did. He went on to do like after this, I think like Cape Cape Fear was a little yeah. Like he did Cape like, Fear, yeah, which was really good. Can we run through the Zwick movies real quick? Because I remember the last time we did this, we were pleasantly surprised at how many great things he had. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> don't don't threaten <laughs> Brian with a good time. <laughs> Zwick rules. Yeah, he's like underrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 30, he, he did television, he did 30 something. So this kind of felt like a TV f- movie. Mm-hmm. Last Samurai, Shakespeare, Shakespeare in Love. Blood, Shakespeare. Blood Diamond, oh, Last yeah. Samurai, Legends Courage, of the Fall. The fire. Yeah, there's good J- stuff here. Jack Reacher, Glory. Trial by Fire. Defiance. Defiance was a great movie. Yeah. He's got some good ones. There's The Siege, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of good movies. Yeah. Zwick rules. We saw Defiance in theaters. We did. Yeah. We're the only two. And if you don't like Shakespeare and love, you love and other drugs. <laughs> that was a good. Oh. One. <laughs> that is, I enjoy that. Movie. I did too, for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I mean, you see Anne Hathaway <laughs> naked in it, so it's up there with Havoc. <laughs> she was yeah, in the finest superhero moment. 
Oh, Catwoman? When, yeah. when Catwoman breaks the guy's legs in prison. Breaks his hands. His hands, his hands, yes. And then the, the wardens are like, she'll be all right in the men's prison. Yeah, they just <laughs> throw this woman into a men's prison. <laughs> and the audience is supposed to be like, yeah, this is going to go totally fine. Yes. <laughs> it may be the dumbest scene in cinema history. And you know what? I can deal with like dumb shit in my superhero movies mm-hmm. when the world is goofy. But when it's Nolan, a, like hard nosed reality movie. This is all real, man. This yeah. is practical. This shit can happen, just, bro. And it's like she's breaking guys' hands. She's not gonna get raped by hundreds of the, men. The scene <laughs> is sh- they bring her to a men's prison with like animals, and they go, "Is she gonna be all right in this men's prison?" Flips upside down, breaks his hands, and they go, "She'll be all right." <laughs> <laughs> I hate you for bringing this up because now I have to find the clip and watch it. Oh, <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> oh, I assume so. <laughs> I right. watch it a few times. <laughs> That's it for this one, guys. <laughs> that was good. To, uh, thank you for bringing that. That that. I, uh, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank, I appreciate thank it. you for I'm joining us, Chris. Big fan of the show, and thank you for having me. Thank Just you. Wonderful. I yeah. think you are the first guest to listen to the show and come on. Really. Oh no, no. Greg, Greg Greg Wyshynski said he heard us. He yeah. Heard us, <laughs> Cuz I emailed him and he's like, he probably was like I got to see. Yeah, he had to screen us. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck I'm getting into. <laughs> so, yeah, you're the second one. Cool. <laughs> All right. But uh, you want to say bye? Bye bye. Thank you for listening and watching and all that it's happy horse shit. VP Nord VPN. Uh Raid Shadow Legends, all that. You got to say anything about uh <laughs> that that like button? Oh, yeah. smash that subscribe button. <laughs> Do you like have... uh, that too? <laughs> what? Do, have a Do I have a doodle? Do have a doodle? Oh. oh. Do I got a doodle? Oh, you do? Yeah. Can you, uh. What let did him, he, oh, let him... sure. <laughs> what, what did he draw? What did he draw real quick? It's... Al Jolson? <laughs> he had to turn the page to see if there was a drawing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a very ac- accurate yes. uh, portrayal uh, of of the of the siege of Fort Hamilton. <laughs> Fort Wagner. <laughs> Fort Wagner. Excuse me. How Fort many, Hamilton. How many New York forts are we going to in Staten yeah. Island forts? You want to try to uh, let's let's give a nice little description here. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so we have. Well, we'll pull it up. We'll pull it up. And um. We have what is either a castle or the New York City skyline <laughs> with stick figures attacking it and a penis jutting out the side. <laughs> that's a cannon. Would you say that's accurate? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's pretty accurate, but how I take it is it's definitely the Manhattan skyline. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Manhattan skyline. But, like, <laughs> none of the stick figures have weapons. They're just kind of, like, running towards yeah, the you're skyline. Right. I say attacking, but really I mean, like, meandering out. But it also could too. be, like, a flagpole. Like, they're running towards it's the flag. On, it's on par. It's so mm. difficult to, like... It, <laughs> it's on par with the closing credits of the film where there's that famous uh, the monument. Step, yeah. uh, monument. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, a beautiful piece of artwork. Yeah. If, <laughs> which, ever in Boston, Massachusetts, you can see that. And Beacon Hill, it's at the beginning of uh, the Freedom Trail, I believe. Oh, cool. Right? It's, it's, it's it really? somewhere. I don't know if it's at the beginning, but I know it's on Beacon Avenue. Mm-hmm. It's it's facing uh, Boston Common. If you look over your right shoulder, you'll see Cheers. If you look over your left shoulder, it'll be the uh, the Massachusetts State House. Huh. All right. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So, Chris, want to thank you for joining us. Thank you. I want to thank you all for listening and or watching us. Like and subscribe. Smash that button. You know what to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to give a big thank you to Walt Tell him Steve, Dave, Land is recorded in the studio. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you all for joining us. Follow us on all social media, Reviewing History Pod on Twitter, Our View History Pod on Twitter, Reviewing History everywhere. You can email us, ReviewingHistoryPod.com. We have a website now, uh, ReviewingHistoryPod.com. You can connect to all our bullshit there. YouTube, you see a picture right? of Brian YouTube. from like 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a YouTube channel now. We, there too, is right? a YouTube, YouTube channel with video, so you yeah. can see this. Um, what else? Oh, follow me on all social media, at Brian Rupert. Follow me on Letterboxd. I rank review everything I watch. Follow, him home. follow me down. That's it. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for joining us. You're still here? It's Go over. Ho- it's over. <laughs> Go home. <laughs>
Bye. Bye. <laughs>